Baylor game. The St. Joseph Mustangs have the night off tonight because it is Mink League All-Star festivities going on. The Home Run Derby took place earlier this evening. And now tonight, the second annual Mink League All-Star game as the North All-Stars take on the South All-Stars here at Phil Welch Stadium. I am Dave Rigger. Again, a pleasure to have you along here from Phil Welch as the Mustangs are the leaders in the Mink League North. And in the Mink League South, the leader is Joplin right now. We'll talk about these teams and talk about everything that's gone on in the Mink League in the first half of the season. But the Mustangs are 25-8, and 18-8 eight, and eight in Mink League play. They've got a game-and-a-half lead right now on Sedalia and a two-and-a-half game lead on Chillicothe right now in the Mink League North. We're a little past the midway point of the season as, again, there's less than a month left in this regular season as these teams will wrap up play here around the 23rd or 24th and then Four teams will advance to the Mink League Tournament for the first time this season. But it's the North against the South for the second consecutive year. Again, last year was the inaugural year of the Mink League All-Star Game, and now it is year number two. The St. Joseph Mustangs have seven All-Stars. There was supposed to be six. They have added an All-Star because there was an injury, so they added Tyler Cox. As Tyler has played right field much of the year, he's played a little bit of left field as well, but he will be on the team today as he will be joined by Evan McDonald, Brady Anderson, Kyle Urich, and Brett Maher as position players. McDonald will start, as will Tyler Cox, and then the two pitchers for the St. Joseph Mustangs will be Jake Pearl and John Milan. Milan has been, fan well, both guys have been fantastic so far this year. Milan's 4-0 with a 0.36 ERA and Jake Pearl no decisions in eight relief appearances. He has a one ERA in nine innings pitched this season. So he has been fantastic this year. And the Mustangs have seven All-Stars here in year number two of this All-Star game, which is again hosted by the Mustangs and here at Phil Welch Stadium. It's the North All-Stars against the South All-Stars in the second annual Mink League All-Star game from Phil Welch as we continue right here on ESPN 1550.
Hey, I am Dave Rigert. A pleasure to have you along. Let's meet the starting lineups in our All-Star game tonight. First for the South All-Stars, as they will be the visiting team on the scoreboard tonight. As they will lead things off with Kainalu Patoy from Nevada, and he will play center field. Hitting second is Sam Vega. Vega is going to play shortstop tonight. He is from the Joplin Outlaws. Tyler Pagano from Nevada will play left field and hit third. J.C. Santos from Joplin will play third base, and he will hit in a cleanup spot. Dylan Skinner will play first base this evening, and Skinner plays for the Ozark Generals. Judah Zikafus will play in right field as he is going to hit sixth, and he plays for the Nevada Griffins. Kyle Thurman plays for Branson Hill DH here in the game and hit in the seven hole. Hitting eighth is Nick Gata, and he will play second base. Nick plays for Ozark, and Brad Coyos. It will be the catcher. He will hit number nine for the South All-Stars as he plays for the Ozark Generals as well. Zach Maskell will get the start tonight. Maskell pitches for the Ozark Generals. He is 3-1 and one so far this year with a 4.22 ERA. So again, Patoy, Vega, and Pagano followed by Santos, Skinner, and Zikafus, and then Thurman, Gata, and Coyos for the South All-Stars here tonight. For the North All-Stars, they will go like this. They'll lead things off with Evan McDonald from the St. Joseph Mustangs, and he will play shortstop tonight. Hitting second is Quade Smith, and he will play in left field from... Actually, he's going to play center field. He and Nick Galley have switched things up. He will play center field tonight, as he is from the Sedalia Bombers. Hitting in the three spot is former Missouri, or current Missouri Western senior-to-be. He will be Nick Galley. He'll play in left field as he is for the Chillicothe Mudcats. Eric Wegeman is from Clarenda Hill DH and hit in the four hole. Alex B is the catcher. He is from Sedalia and he hits in the five hole. Hitting six is Robert Cummins from Sedalia and he will play first base. Parker Phillips from Nevada, excuse me, from Clarenda will play third base and hit seventh and hitting eighth from the St. Joseph Mustangs is Tyler Cox and he'll play right. And then Jake Biller will hit ninth from Chillicothe as he plays second base for Matt Johnson's team. Justin Murphy gets the start here on the mound. Murphy he pitches for the Sedalia Bombers. He is 3-0 this year with a 1.67 earned run average. So, again, it goes McDonald, Smith, and Golly, followed by Wagaman, B, and Cummins, then Phillips, Cox, and Biller for the North All-Stars as we get set for this All-Star game tonight. It's the North against the South. Last year, the North was able to beat the South 6-2. And, again, it doesn't mean home field advantage in the postseason or thing like the Major League Baseball All-Star game does. But fun to have this event. They had the home run derby earlier tonight, and the winner of that was Nick Bandman from Chillicothe, the big left-hander, put on a show as he was able to just knock tons of homers onto the party deck, and he was fantastic here in the home run derby tonight. So he was the winner after getting 15 in the first round. Then he got 21 in the second round. He, scored, he hit 14 homers in the third round, and he was fantastic here tonight. First pitch is a fastball from Justin Phillips and Kainalu Patoy, the center fielder. From Nevada will foul one away as his first pitch is in there for strike one after the foul. No balls and a strike to Patoy. Again, he plays for the Nevada Griffins in the south. Here's a pitch low and inside for ball number one. Right now, the standings in the Mink League South as they come to bat first. We'll talk about the north as we continue. But Joplin leads the, the south. And again, it's a, a three-team race. Branson's had a rough year. They're 2-27. and 27. There's a foul off to the left side from Patoy. As now it's a one ball and two strike count. But they've had some troubles this year, Branson has. But the other three teams are all within two games of each other. And much like in the north, the top three teams are all within two and a half games of each other. And again, just two teams from each division make the postseason this year as they've had a tournament foul back from Patoy. And it keeps the count one ball and two strikes. The Nevada Griffins are 15 and 10 this year. Patoy bats left handed. And he fouls one back again. Justin Murphy plays his college baseball at Southeast Missouri State. He was 4-2 this past year for SEMO. So far this year, again, this summer, 3-0 with a 1-6-7 ERA. He struck out 28 and walked only 5 in 27 innings of work. Here's the 1-2 pitch line down the first baseline. Good play by Cummins, and he'll take it himself. Got a big high hop on a hard-hit ball. Be able to grab it, step on the bag, and he is out three unassisted for the first out in the game. Last year we saw a pretty low-scoring game. 6-2 to two was the score, and again, the North jumped on them early. But when you're – and you see this a lot in the Major League Baseball All-Star game. When you have All-Star teams, those pitchers are usually pretty good, and it's tough to get hits. There's an off-speed pitch by Murphy in there for strike number one. This is Sam Vega, the shortstop. Vega plays for the Joplin Outlaws. Wrapped up his sophomore year at Southwestern Community College in Iowa. 0-1 pitches low and away, so it's quickly 
a one on one count to Sam Vega. Vega this year is hitting 283 for the Joplin Outlaws. There's a ball that gets by Alex B., the catcher. Again, they've got the Sedalia tandem. As the other catcher is Brady Anderson for the Mustangs. With Justin Murphy starting, they start to Alex B. behind the plate. Two balls and a strike. So Vega fouls one off to the right side, and now it's evened up. Two balls and two strikes to count. Vega has signed to play at Northern Illinois, so he'll be a Division I player after hitting 297 with five homers and 25 RBI at Southwestern Community College. He is from Puerto Rico. Here's the 2-2 pitch. He's lunging for that. It's a chopper towards short. Good play by McDonald. He scoops it on the short hop and throws to first base in time. Great play by Evan McDonald. It was not hit hard. He had to charge it, grab it, make the throw to first base. And the St. Joseph Mustang shortstop gets a good out right there. Sam Vega grounds out 6-3 on that ground out. So two up, two down to start the game, and that'll bring up Tyler Pagano, who was in the All-Star Home Run Derby. He made it to the semifinals, got knocked out in the semis by the catcher for the South, Brad Coyos. Pagano hit five home runs in each of his rounds, which wasn't a ton, but it was enough to get him to the semifinals. Then he did lose that. First pitch was a called strike. This one's low for ball number one. Pagano, one of 12 Nevada Griffins on the South, and part of that is because Branson had a couple. There's a pitch low, two and one. Branson had a couple of guys in the in the All-Star game, but one just didn't want to come, so he didn't come. So the manager is Ryan Mansfield from Nevada, so he filled it with one of his own guys, and another guy got hurt you know, last night or the night before, so he added another Nevada Griffin. So they had 10 originally, which was a lot. Here's a chopper towards second. Charging is Jake Biller, the second baseman from Chillicothe. He will make the play, and it's a 4-3 ground out, and that will end the inning. A quick 1-2 threatening is a south all-Stars go in order. The North will come back for the first time as we continue with the Mink League All-Star Game as we are live at Philwell Stadium right here on ESPN 1550. From Philwell Stadium, I am Dave Riggert. A pleasure to have you along for the Mink League All-Star game tonight. As the North All-Stars will bat for the first time, the South All-Stars went in order here in this first inning of play. We are in the bottom of inning number one now. The North won the inaugural Mink League All-Star game one season ago. And now Evan McDonald from the St. Joseph Mustangs will lead things off. And what a year it has been for Evan McDonald just wrapped up his junior year at Georgia Southern, but he is hitting 472 in a pretty big sample size. He has played in 14 games, made 53 at-bats. So he looks at a pitch from Zach Maskell, low and away for ball number one. But he is now 25 for 53 this summer with a homer and 12 RBI. He's only struck out four times. He's walked five times, and now he slices one foul down the right field line. So it's out of play for a foul ball. That'll be strike one to Evan McDonald, the Mustang shortstop, who isn't 
too far from home as he grew up in Platte City, Missouri, went to Platte County High School, and then played two years at Barton Community College in Great Bend. And now at Georgia Southern as he is playing Division I baseball. There's a pitch up and in from Maskell, and it will be ball number two. Maskell gets the start from Ozark. He is from Kansas City. When he went to Southwestern Community College as well in Illinois. He now plays for Lincoln University in the MIAA in Jefferson City. They had a rough year this past year. They were 1-49. and 49. He was 0-12 for that team, but he's had a decent summer. 3-1 is the area a little high at 4.22, but he'll get the start here in this All-Star game. There's a two-hopper that gets through the infield just by the shortstop, diving to his left with Sam Vega, but it won't count in his numbers this season, but it does go for a base hit here in the Mink League All-Star game. So his hot season continues as it's a base hit. They got through the infield on a couple of hops. Evan McDonald will lead out with a single. That'll bring up Quade Smith. We've seen a lot of Quade Smith this summer. The Mustangs and the Stelia Bombers have already played all six of their meetings this year, and Quade Smith played in all six of those. He's playing center field here tonight. There goes McDonald, and now Coyos' throw down to second base is going to gun him down. Coyos with a great throw on the money. It was a ball outside, but McDonald gets gunned down trying to steal second base. So Coyos who was in the home run derby earlier tonight, will gun him down, and there's one down now here in the bottom half of the first inning. Quade Smith from Sedalia. Looks at a pitch in there for strike number one. One ball, one strike to Smith. So far this year for Quade, hitting 323. No homers, 15 RBI. He scored 26 runs. He's walked 26 times this year. So he's getting on base a lot. Swings and a foul tip there, I believe, into the glove of Coyos. So now it's a two ball and a one strike count. Wade plays at Nichols State, just wrapped up his junior year. He's from Brandon, Mississippi. Here's the one-two. It is outside. Two balls and two strikes to count. No scores. We're in the bottom half of the first inning. Nick Golly is on deck. There's a ground ball. Gets through the right side of the infield off the bat of Quade Smith. So back-to-back -back singles to start the game. But again, McDonald was erased on the attempted steal of second base. So could be two on with nobody out. Instead, there's a man at first base with one down. As there's the second consecutive hit in the inning. But again, as I mentioned, one down. That'll bring up Nick Galley, who plays his college baseball here in St. Joe as he plays at Missouri Western. Golly, a heck of a player for the Griffins. As Nick this past year hit 342 hits, seven homers, 62 RBI for Missouri Western. Throw to first base, and boy, they nearly got him. They do have three umpires in this game tonight. Normally they just have two, but they do have three umpires here this evening. So far this summer, Gali is hitting 305. He's playing left field tonight. As he plays for the Chillicothe Mudcats. Here's a pitch high for ball one to Nick Gali. Gali is a native of Vancouver, Washington, went to Mount Hood Community College. Again now at Missouri Western. He bats right-handed. There goes Quade Smith. Going to test Coyos again. His throw down. A good throw, but it one hops in there, and the tag was a little bit late being applied. Pretty good throw by Coyos again, the catcher. His teammate, Nick Gata, for the Ozark Generals, was right, right there to short hop it, but it made him pick up his glove a little bit and wasn't able to apply the tag. So the Mustangs being very aggressive on the base pass. That was a called strike to make it a one ball. And one strike count, but a stolen base for Quade Smith. He's off of second now. Galley squares to bunt, pulls it back. The pitch was outside for ball two. Smith, during his time with Sedalia, has five steals and seven attempts so far. But he is in scoring position now for Nick Galley. Matt Johnson is the manager of the Mustangs and of this North team. Smith off of second. Maskell checks him. And now time has been called by Galley at home plate. It was taking a long time to throw the pitch, so he decided to call time. Here's the 2-1. He tries to bunt it, bunts it in the air. It's going to hit the ground. It's barehanded by Santos, and he throws him out. It was bunted up in the air, but it was in no man's land between third and the pitcher's mound, and they really weren't playing him in. So Galley is thrown out 5-3 on a great Bare hand play by J.C. Santos, and now there's an in at third base with two down. So trying to bunt for a base hit, he certainly wasn't trying to sacrifice him over. At least I don't believe he was. 
He got him to third base, but now there's two down. That'll bring up Eric Wegeman. Make a right-hand bat as he plays for the Clarenda A's. And they will peel down to first. They're going to say he went around, so that'll be a swing and a miss for Eric Wegeman. Wegeman, one of three position players for the Clarenda A's, as he is hitting 338 this summer. Six home runs and 33 RBI. He's had a big, big summer. He plays at Orange Coast College out in California. He is from Aliso Viejo, California. There's the 1-1 pitch, and he hammers one down the left field line, but yanked it way foul. One ball, two strikes to count. Zach Maskell trying to work around a couple of walks. He got some help with the cot stealing, or a couple of base hits, I should say. 1-2, curveball. They will appeal, and they're going to say he went around. So they had to appeal twice. They're going to say he went around both times. That'll be a strikeout for Maskell on a nasty breaking pitch, and that will retire the North All-Stars with a runner at third base. After one complete inning, there was no score in the Mink League All-Star game as we continue from Phil Welch Stadium right here on ESPN 1550. A pleasure to have you along for the Mink League All-Star Game tonight. Justin Murphy is back out for his second inning of work. I'm guessing after the second inning, we'll probably see one pitcher per inning moving forward. No scores. We're in the top of the second. And J.C. Santos, the third baseman hitting left-handed, will lead things off as he plays for the Joplin Outlaws and the South All-Stars. So far this summer, a man from Puerto Rico is hitting 273. No homers and four RBI. One ball, one strike, the count. And now it's a two-ball and one-strike count to Santos. He just wrapped up his sophomore year at Southwestern Community College in Illinois, or excuse me, in Iowa. I think I said Illinois earlier, too. It's Iowa. He shoots one fouled in the left field line. Two balls and two strikes to count. Lead-off man here in the top of the second inning for the South All-Stars. Again, the home run derby took place before this. They had a scout day earlier today as there were a bunch of pro scouts here in town. And for any Mink League player that wanted to work out for them, it was available. Three balls and two strikes to count. Off-speed pitch stays outside to the four-hole hitter. J.C. Santos, Dylan Skinner, and then Judah Zikafu. So the next two batters do up for the South All-Stars. There's a foul off the left side. Three balls and two strikes to count. A decent crowd here. I wouldn't say it's a huge crowd. Usually kind of a midweek crowd for the Mustangs. There's a ball that goes off the glove of the pitcher, Justin Murphy, and then the second baseman, Biller, couldn't handle it. We'll see how they score that thing. If he handles it, I think it's probably an out. But after it went off of Murphy's glove, it kind of went away from where he was going to. So we'll see how they officially score that thing. They're going to give him an infield single. Biller had to hustle. He knew he had to hustle, so he just couldn't handle it with a glove. And they'll give him an infield base hit. 
First base hit in the game for the South All-Stars. Justin Murphy threw 16 pitches in the opening frame. His first pitch here to Dylan Skinner is an off-speed pitch that's in there for strike number one. Skinner playing first base. As he plays for the Ozark Generals. He was a senior this past year at Lindenwood University in Belleville, Illinois. That is an NAI school. school NAI school, it's not the Lindenwood University in St. Charles that is in the MIAA. One ball, one strike the count. Off-speed pitch stays outside from Justin Murphy. And Murphy this past year at SEMO. Four and two with a three area and 26 relief appearances. Chopper up the middle, backhanded, flip to McDonald. He spins and it will be on to first base and not in time as a throw from McDonald brought him down the line just a bit. Good play by Biller back behind second base. He flipped to McDonald. It won't be an error or anything. You can't assume the double play, but should have had two that time as the throw went down the first baseline toward the catcher and it drew Cummins off the bag just a bit. Good play though. Overall, Biller with the backhand and the spin at second base by McDonald. They get the force out, and it'll be a fielder's choice as that goes 4-6. Santos is out. There's a ground ball going to be cut off by the third baseman Phillips. He gets one, and the relay not in time. So got the out at second base there as well. So a couple of fielder's choice with a man at first base and nobody out. Now there's a man at first base and two down as Judah Zikafus went the opposite way and was cut off by Parker Phillips. And that'll bring to the plate Kyle Thurman, who played one year at Missouri Western. He didn't play that year, but he was on the team. And he's been at four different universities, and he's played for three others now, has landed at Evangel University. First pitch here, swing and a miss. He was in the home run derby. Did get knocked out in the first round by Brad Cuyos, Cuyos, excuse me, who is the catcher for the South. He hit five home runs, I believe, in the opening round. There goes Zikafus, got a huge jump to throw down by B. He had no prayer to get him. Zikafus guessed right on the right-hander Murphy, and he stole that bag easily. The ball was in the dirt anyway, and Zikafus now is in scoring position. Judah Zikafus has eight steals and 11 attempts for Nevada this year. Now he's at second base with two down. So Kyle Thurman a chance to drive in a run here. Thurman, 316 average, a homer and 15 RBI. He had a big net against the Mustangs earlier this year. Swings at a curveball here and he misses. One ball, two strikes. Thurman had a four for five game with two doubles in that game. I mentioned he began his career at Missouri Western. Then he went to Crowder College, and then he went to Longview College, and now he, he's at Evangel University in Kansas City, or excuse me, in Springfield. Here is the 1-2. It is low, gets away from B, and that allows Zickerhus to jog down to third base. So two balls and two strikes the count, now a runner at third base on a wild pitch. So Zickerhus stands at third. Al Thurman, a base hit, can score a run as we are in the top of the second inning. No score so far here in the Mink League All-Star game. As I mentioned earlier, kind of like a midweek Mustangs crowd. Makes sense since it's a midweek All-Star game. And it's going to be swung on and misses in the dirt and throwing down to first base is Alex B. His teammate from Sedalia, Robert Cummins, will catch it, and they will get the strikeout to end the inning as Cal Thurman leaves the man at third base. We go to the bottom. Of the second inning, there's no score here in the Mink Lake All-Star Game as we continue right here on ESPN 1550.
inside Phil Weld Stadium. Thanks for joining me for Mustangs Baseball tonight. Uh, excuse me, for Mink League Baseball tonight, I should say. Mustangs off tonight. They'll be back in action tomorrow. But the Mink League All-Star Game takes center stage tonight. Again, the home run derby won by Nick Bandman from Chillicothe earlier. As he put on a pretty big show, hitting 15, 21, and 14, respectively, in the three rounds. And he only had three minutes in the championship round to do it and still hit 14 home runs. So he put on a pretty impressive outing as he hit 50 home runs in the three rounds. We go to the bottom of the second here at Philwell Stadium. The North All-Stars will bat for the second time. Alex B. will see a new pitcher as it looks like the South All-Stars will go one inning apiece for all of their pitchers tonight or less if they want to try and get any more guys into the game. But the new pitcher will be Aaron Bartow as he plays this summer with the Nevada Griffins. Here's his first pitch to Alex Bede, left-handed hitting catcher for the Sedalia Bombers. First pitch, a called strike from Bartow to B. Beyond the season, hitting 280, and he plays at Sedalia. Plays his college baseball at William Woods University. No homers, 13 RBI this summer. Popped him up. It's going to drift out of play foul back behind home plate. So he's down to the count 2 On deck is his teammate at Sedalia, Robert Cummins. And then it will be Parker Phillips from Clarenda. And there's a fastball high and away for ball number one from Aaron Bartow. Bartow this year for Nevada. He is 1-0 with a 1.29 ERA. He's done in 14 innings. He's appeared in six games, all in relief. So he's done some extended work going two or three innings. There's an off-speed pitch that stays high. Two and two. Count is even up now. Bartow's only allowed 10 hits in 14 innings. He's struck out 17 and walked eight. A whip of 1.29 so far this year for the Griffs. 2-2 two -two pitch is swung on and fouled back. It goes off the glove of the catcher, Coyos, and to the backstop. So he stays alive. Alex B. played for Sedalia two seasons ago. Didn't last year, but played for them two years ago. Hit 289 with a homer and 16 RBI. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. He stays alive again, fouls it back. B. is from Normal, Illinois. Went to Glenwood High School and then on to Kansas State for three years. First two years, only played in 28 total games and made 13 starts this, as a junior back in 2015. He did start 26 games and play in 33 overall. But one of his coaches is, there's a foul again back. Good battle here. This will be the eighth pitch of the at-bat coming up to B from Bartow. Leadoff man here in the bottom of the second inning. No score here in the Mink League All-Star game. But he transferred to William Woods because his coach said, oh, he is the head coach at William Woods. Here's the 2-2. Ooh, he couldn't check his swing. Great breaking pitch, and Bartow gets him after a pretty good battle between those two. The eighth pitch finally got him, and he strikes out for the first down here in the inning. That'll bring up Robert Cummins, the first baseman from Sedalia. The North All-Stars had their first two men reach in the opening inning, but they weren't on at the same time because McDonald singled, and then he was caught trying to steal second base. First pitch, long away for ball one to Cummins. Cummins, a 306 hitter this summer for Sedalia, one home run, 10 RBI. He plays his college baseball at Midland University in Fremont, Nebraska. There he taps one foul by the on-deck circle on the south side. South All-Stars occupy the third base dugout tonight. One ball, one strike to count. One out, nobody on base for the North All-Stars here in the second. Here's the pitch from Bartow. Slow breaking balls in there for strike number two. One and two to Cummins. Cummins had a big year this past year for the Warriors of Midland University. 394 average, seven, seven homers, and 41 RBI. Here's a foul off to the right side. Keeps the count one and two. And Bartow had the one strikeout. Barto, the man of the man now. He's from Dallas. Went to, or he goes to. No, I guess he went to. Because he was a senior this past year. Mary Harden at Baylor. There's a pitch in the dirt for ball number two. So it's in the Baylor University system. But it's Mary Harden Baylor. Division three school. And there he was 1-0 with a 5-5-2 ERA. He made three appearances. They were all starts, but 
I don't know if he got hurt or what. Fly ball center field. Hit to right center field. Drifting over is Patoy from center and Zikafus from right. And Patoy will reach up. Call off Zikafus with those shades on and he'll make the catch. So another pretty good battle. That was a six-pitch A.B. And he fouled a couple off. But Cummins is retired. So they've had good at-bats against Bartow. But he has retired the first two. Now Parker Phillips will hit the third baseman from the Clorinda A's. Phillips is a young kid, just was a freshman this past year in a red shirt at Austin P University. First pitch goes to the backstop. It's low for ball number one. This summer, he's had a pretty good summer. He's played in nearly every game for Clarenda. 32 games. He's the DH. A lot of times for Clarenda, playing third base here in this game tonight. 6'3", 244, right-hander from Collierville, Tennessee. Again, plays at Austin P. Was a redshirt this past year for a team in the Ohio Valley that went 21 and 9. But a 282 average for the A's. Now a chopper toward third. Santos charges bare hands again, puts it back in his glove, and a one hopper to first. And another good play by J.C. Santos, the Joplin third baseman for the South All Stars. And that'll be a 1 2 3 inning as Parker Phillips is out 5 3 on a fantastic play by Santos. We go to the third after two. It's no score between the North and South All Stars here in the second annual Mink League All Star game on ESPN 1550. Support the St. Joe Mustangs and their wooden bat club. Yep, that just makes sense. The Brown Lumber Company, we believe things should just make sense. If you need lumber and tools, go to a lumber yard and a hardware store, not some giant box store with groceries, kittens, and toilet paper. Brown Lumber Company on Patey and Fifth, a natural supporter of wood, tools, the hard work in American way, and of course, the wooden bat club of the Mustangs, because that just makes sense. <laughs> wood, yeah, we got that. As a Buchanan County Commissioner, Dan Hausman has worked with many great county employees. He's also helped hundreds of people in the county. He's led the way in helping reduce costs and has held the line on county taxes. Hundreds of thousands of dollars have been saved through better purchasing and working smarter. Economic development has always been a top priority. He's helped create over 2,600 new jobs and brought in over $825 million in new investments in Buchanan County. Experience counts. Vote for Dan Hausman, Eastern District Commissioner. I'm Dan Hausman. This message is paid for by the citizens for Dan Hausman. Housman, Donnie Miller, Treasure. Well, I've been driving that old pickup across all these 50 states, and the sure ain't seen saving like those energy rebates. KCPNL, not good at country songs, great at saving you money. We have 18 ways to save you a little or a lot. Find the one that's right for you at kcpl.com slash save. Save money and energy with kcpnl.com slash save. This is St. Joe's Home for Sports. ESPN. ESPN. We continue from Phil Wells Stadium. I am Dave Rigger. It's a pleasure to have you along for the Mink League All-Star Game as the St. Joseph Mustangs and the rest of the Mink League have the night off tonight. So tonight, the best players in the Mink League will take center stage, and they are right now. A new pitcher here in the third inning will stay with the Sedalia Bombers, and they will bring in a left-hander by the name of Evan Dodd, as he is 3-1 and one so far this summer with a 1.87 ERA. He has made five appearances. They've all been starts. He's thrown 33 and two-thirds innings. He's allowed just 25 hits. He has struck out 28 and walked 13. He's got a whip of 1.13, so he's had a good year. And, again, all the numbers for these guys that I give, they've all had really good years, and they would not be in the Mink League All-Star game. No scores. We're in the top of the third now. South All-Stars will come to bat with 8, 9, and 1. And Nick Gotta will lead things off, the second baseman, who plays at Northwest Missouri State, or did, as he was a senior this past year for the Bearcats this summer. As he earned the start at second base here in the All-Star game, he's hitting 250. Young man from San Diego, California, went to Fullerton College for a couple of seasons, then Northwest Missouri State. He helped Northwest get to back to the MIAA tournament for the first time in a few seasons. Won a couple of games there even also. First pitch is high from Evan Dodd to Nick Gatta. An 8-9-1. No runs, one hit, no errors for the south, and no runs, two hits, no errors for the north. There's a called strike outside corner on a fastball from Evan Dodd. 
Gata has walked 19 times, struck out 11, so he's walked eight more times than he's struck out. His on base is at 412 despite a 250 average, so he's getting on base a lot. He swings through this one, and now it's a 1 2 count. Dodd's curveball stays high, now it's a two ball and two strike count. Dodd plays his college baseball, Arkansas Fort Smith, a Division II school in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Two balls and two strikes to count. Fastball blew it by him. He swung and missed in a strikeout. Gotta talks to the umpire, and he wanted to check to see if that was a strike or not. Now Gata's going to talk to Brad Coyos, the catcher who is his teammate at Ozark. So Coyos will bat as he was in the home run derby. Made the championship, but got beat 14 to 4 in the championship by Nick Bandman. But he won the south part of the All-Star Home Run Derby. One ball, no strikes to count with one out. Nobody on base. Coyos looks at a strike after a ball was thrown by Dodd. Dodd this past year, I mentioned about Arkansas Fort Smith. He made 11 relief appearances. He struggled. He had a 12.08 earned run average. Now that's a 2 and one count to Coyos. Everything was out of the pen, 12 and two-thirds innings. He had 16 hits. He struck out 11, but walked 14. He's got a 2-to-1 to strikeout-to-walk ratio this summer, and again, he walked more than he struck out in the spring with his school ball team. So he's made a good adjustment here this summer, throwing many more strikes. There's the one fouled off to the right side from Coyos. 2-2 two, two inside, three balls and two strikes. I mentioned some of Coyos' numbers during the home run derby, but, boy, he had a monster year at Central Methodist University this past season. 329 average, 18 home runs, and 61 RBI. 3-2 pitch is lined to right field. Going back is Tyler Cox from the Mustangs. He'll make the catch in fairly deep right field. And that will be the second out in the inning. Now back to the top of the order, and that will bring up Kainalu Patoy. The toy was a late addition to the roster. And he and Pagano, who were both starting, were late additions. They were not on the original rosters that came out on, would have been Tuesday when they came out. On the season, Patoy, though, I'm surprised he wasn't on the original roster because he leads the Nevada Griffins with a 375 average, now gets hit. First pitch that Evan Dodd threw him, he got hit, so Patoy will reach base. He's hitting 375 with three homers, 12 RBI. He'd only been hit once this summer. Well, there's number two, but it won't count. He has walked more than he has struck out. He's had a good year for the Nevada Griffins, who have given the Mustangs trouble all year long. They're 3-0 against the Mustangs. That's the only team St. Joseph has not beat this year that they've played. So a hit by pitch. Let's see if the South All-Stars can get something going with two outs. Though so the first base is not in time. Dot a lefty, so that'll be a little easier to keep Patoy there. But Toy only has two stolen bases and two attempts, so probably not a threat to still, especially the lefty on the mound. There's a called strike to Sam Vega, the shortstop for the south from the Joplin on outlaws. Dodd from the stretch for the first time. Gets the sign from Alex B., his teammate at Sedalia. There's the high leg kick in the pitch. It's in the dirt. Good stop by B. A ball and a strike. An 85-degree night here at Phil Welch for the All-Star game. No win really a speak of at all. The flag is limp right now, and it wasn't blowing in or out during the home run derby as well. There was no helping or hurting the participants in the All-Star game tonight. There's a ground ball toward first big high hop for Cummins after he chopped it down the first baseline. He grabs it, steps on the bag, and that will retire the South All-Stars. They leave one on base. We're through two and a half. No score here in the Mink League All-Star game from Phil Welch Stadium on ESPN 1550. Richard Sherman, all pro cornerback for the Seattle Seahawks. When the little voice in my stomach gets hungry, he talks mad trash like, you know I don't want these weak snacks. Get me all natural Alberto beef jerky. So I grab the most delicious lean protein on the planet, Alberto beef jerky. It's loaded with savory cuts of lean beef. Listen to the little voice in your stomach and pick up some all natural Alberto beef jerky. Alberto beef jerky. You get out what you put in. Refers to Alberto's all natural line of beef jerky. Minimally processed, no artificial ingredients. There's four things you love. Your family, your home, the Mustangs, and your car. Eastridge Car Washes can't help with the first three. 
But boy, can they help with your car. East Ridge Car Washes are St. Joe's premier drive through washes, offering wash options to fit any budget. Free vets, hand dry, and the only washes in town to completely remove icky summer bugs. Show your car some love. Come to East Ridge Car Wash behind Firestone on Village Drive next to the Highway Patrol on the North Belt. Proud to sponsor your St. Joe Mustangs. Hello, this is Lavelle Rucker. I encourage you to join me in voting for Gary Myers for circuit judge. Gary has 36 years of diverse legal experience and wrote the Call Before You Dig statute, which has saved countless lives. Gary has served as a leader with the American Red Cross, Family Guidance, Ag Expo, and United Way. Vote Gary Myers, circuit judge. This commercial is paid for by the committee to elect Gary Myers judge, Bertha Parker treasurer. This is St. Joe's Hall for Sports. ESPN. ESPN. 1550. We're going to the bottom of the third here in the Make League All-Star game. I am Dave Riggert, new pitcher on the hill for the South All-Stars. And it looks like it's Tanner Allen from Ozark because he's wearing number two and there isn't a number two, but I believe it's Tanner Allen. I'll check to make sure, but he was the only other player. Let me check their roster to see. They don't even have a number two on their roster, so I, I'm pretty sure it's Tanner Allen. So we'll go with Tanner. Yes, he was on the original roster. I don't know if there was a player added, but there is not a number two on the Ozark Generals roster. So we'll go with Tanner Allen. He's had a great summer. Young man from Marsh, or excuse me, from Mansfield, Missouri. Got a Longview Community College. Was a sophomore this past year. He's appeared in eight games, all in relief. No decisions with a 0.77 ERA and 11 and two-thirds innings. Allowed four hits. He has 20 Ks and eight walks this year. Tyler Cox will lead things off from the St. Joseph Mustangs playing in right field. He takes a big swing and a miss there as he does not get cheated on his swings. He misses that one. Here's the 0-1, and this one hit him. So Allen will hit Tyler Cox trying to come in with a fastball. And now that's the second hit by a pitch we've seen in as many half innings. That'll be the eight, excuse me, the nine-hole hitter, Jake Biller. I think it might be Byler if I remember right. I beg your pardon. No runs, one hit, no errors for the south. No runs, two hits, and no errors for the north. Allen, the third pitcher in the game for the south all-stars. There's a fastball thrown high. Everybody else still the same, a couple of Ozark Generals on the right side of the infield. A couple of Joplin Atlas on the left. And then three Nevada Griffins in the outfield right now for the South All-Stars. One ball, no strikes to count to Jake Byler. Now it's two balls and no strikes. Allen at Longview this past year. Nine appearances all in relief, and he had a 1-4-2 ERA there. So he has had some really good seasons, both this summer and in the spring, for Longview. Here's his pitch off speed is high and away. Now it's a three ball count after he threw a strike right down the middle that Cox missed. He had a big swing and miss. Then he hit Cox with the next fastball and now three consecutive balls thrown. So four overall from Tanner Allen. On deck is Evan McDonald. 3-0 pitch is high. A four pitch walk. Now the North has something doing with two on base and nobody out. And Coyos will go out and talk to his pitcher Tanner Allen. So back to the top of the order. Evan McDonald one for one, then was caught stealing. Again, hitting 472 this summer to lead all Mink League players. He came in a little bit late. But Evan, a young man that has played fantastic so far this year. And again, he's had some rough summers, and he's the first to admit it, too. And we had him on our Mustangs Weekly show a few weeks back in Uncle D's Sports Bar and Grill, brought to you by Precision Tune Auto Care. He, he said he didn't swing it very good the last two summers. He had 171 back in 2014 and 208 last year with the Mustangs. He is seeing everything right now. Two on with nobody out for McDonald. As he is the leadoff man on this squad. He had a base hit his first time up. Back up the middle. Looks at a call strike here. There's a fastball up and in. Cox was hit by a pitch to lead off the inning. Byler walked, so there's two on with nobody out. Again, top order, McDonald, Smith, and Golly. McDonald bats right-handed. Single again back up the middle his first time up. 
Infield double play depth right now. Ooh, good breaking ball. Way out in front of that thing was McDonald. He swings and misses, and now it's a one ball and two strike count. So Allen gets ahead. Again, he struck out 20 in 11 and two-thirds innings. Here's the one-two pitch. He's going to try fastball. Tried to sneak that thing by him inside. He got jammed, but he fought it off. Evan did, and he'll foul into the spectators on the right side. Get the second annual Meek League All-Star game. As they did this a year ago, it really went over well, I thought. And they have brought it back for another year, and I think it's here to stay. There's a line drive left center field off the bat of McDonald. Nobody's going to get to this thing. It's all the way to the wall. Tyler Cox will score easily. Byler from first base is going to round third, and he will score easily. McDonald slides into third. A two RBI triple by the Mustangs, Evan McDonald, and the North All-Stars take a 2-0 lead here in inning number three. That is how well he is playing. It's too bad these numbers won't count this summer for Evan, but a triple to score two, and the North All-Stars take a 2-0 lead. Man, he is locked in right now. He is locked and loaded. He had a four for six game earlier this week. He had a three for five game earlier this week. Now, Quade Smith looks at a fastball high. So the hit by a pitch and the walk come back to hurt Tanner Allen. They usually do to lead off innings. Two balls and no strikes now as Allen's struggling here in inning number three, his first inning of work. They've gone a different pitcher each inning so far. He's from the windup now with Evan at third base. Popped him up on the infield. The second baseman, Gata, comes in. Still on the dirt now. Backpedals a couple of steps. Reaches up with that brown and black mitt, and he will make the catch. So that's a big out to try and keep this just a two-run deficit as the North has taken the lead. Quade Smith now one for two in the game. McDonald stays put. Now it's up to Nick Golly to try and get him in with less than two outs. Man at third base for Golly. He checks his swing. The pitch was high, a fastball. Eric Wegeman from Clarenda is on deck. Golly again plays at Missouri Western. And for the Chillicothe Mudcats, there's a fastball down the middle. He was out 5-3 in the ground ball to the third baseman, J.C. Santos. As he tried to bunt his last time to get on. Checks his swing. Curveball nearly called strike number two, but it was just inside. The umpire almost kind of flinched on that one like he was going to call it. Here's the 2-1 pitch with one out. Hit high in the air to left field, but it's going to be yanked way foul, I believe. And it is going to go off the wall in foul territory. Pagano gave chase. He had to make a long, long run. If he could have got there in time, he probably could have been able to leap up against the wall and make a catch, but it goes off the wall in foul territory. So a long strike. We'll even up the count at two balls and two strikes to Golly. He hit seven dingers for the Griffins this past spring, and now he lines one to left field for a base hit. It gets in front of Pagano, and scoring easily is McDonald. An RBI single for Nick Golly, and the North All-Stars take a 3-0 lead here in the third inning. So the former Griffin, and I guess still current Griffin, he's going to be a senior, and current Mudcat drives in a run. So Golly now at first base, and that'll bring up the cleanup hitter, Eric Wegeman. Especially, and again, hit batters, walks to lead off an inning will kill you, but especially when it's the bottom of the order. He hit the eight-hole hitter, and he walked the nine-hole hitter on four pitches. So that's not good to bring up the top order with two on and nobody out. And now three are in, in the inning with one down and Golly at first base. He's a threat to go. He fakes like he's going to go. The pitch is outside. So Allen having a hard time throwing strikes right now. He's throwing 21 pitches, and now it's a two-ball count to Eric Wegman, who struck out his last time up. He has 21 pitches, only nine for strikes so far. Two balls and no strikes. Golly stays put. There's a called strike. Golly has 12 steals and 15 attempts this summer. He stole 17 bags from Missouri Western in the spring. Two balls and a count. Coyos calls time because the center fielder 
Kainalu Patoy was over in the right center field in, on the warning track. I'm not sure if he was trying to grab a ball or something was on the field, but he went over there. So luckily, Coyos behind the plate called time to let him get back into position. 2-1 to count to Clarendo's Eric Wegman, who's the DH. Now it's blown away. Tanner Allen kind of fighting it right now. You can tell after that pitch he was mad at himself. Three balls and a strike. On deck is Alex B. from Sedalia, the catcher here for the North All-Stars. There goes Golly. It's a swing and a drive to left. He's going to get down for a base hit. And Golly will advance to third on that hit and run. So Golly got a good jump, but boy, on a 3-1 pitch, a great pitch to hit for Wagaman. He knocks into left field. And now that's the fourth hit in the inning, making the third hit in the inning. Third consecutive hit in the North All-Stars have two on with just one out and already three runs in in the inning. So with Golly off on that, he's able to get to third base. He wouldn't have normally because the ball was in front of him and hit fairly hard, so he probably would not have been able to get to third base. So Golly at third, Wagman is at first base. Double play is still in order. Alex B. swings it left-handed as Koyos goes out to talk to Tanner Allen. Nobody up in the pen right now. There is a couple of guys out there. I think it's going to be the next inning pitcher. The pitcher who's going to come in the next inning is I think they're going to let each pitcher go one. If he gets in too much trouble, they may yank him. But In an all-star game, three runs in an inning, that's a lot. Normally they're pretty low-scoring games with the amount of good pitching there is. Here's the first pitch, and it's going to hit Alex B., and that's the second hit batter in the inning for Tanner Allen. He's only retired one batter so far, and that was the pop-up on the infield from Quaid Smith. So after the long meeting, there's a hit by a pitch, and Ryan Mansfield, who's the manager of the South from the Nevada Griffins, is going to go out and talk to Tanner Allen as the entire infield will come in as well. So the base is now loaded for the North All-Stars. They could break this thing wide open. It's only a three-run lead right now, but they could take a... Big lead with a base hit right here. This will be the eighth batter in the inning, and it's Robert Cummins, the six-hole hitter. Galley's at first base. Wagman at second, and B at first. Two hit batters, a walk, a triple, and two singles in this inning. And I mentioned the one out they retired was a pop-up on the infield. Robert Cummins will dig in. He is 0 for 1, flew out to center fielder. Kainalu Patoy, his first time up. No more shadows now here at Phil Welch. There was some concern they may not be able to play this game this late, but they were able to get the transformer that blew yesterday fixed. They had to move up yesterday's game. And now Cummins will drive one to left center field. It gets down for a base hit. They are going to send the runner from second, Wegman. Here's the throw home. It is all the way in. The tag not in time. And Wegman will score. It's a two RBI single from Robert Cummins. And now it's a 5 nothing North All-Star lead. Well, he lined that first pitch to left center field. Golly obviously scored easily. And Wegman sent by Matt Johnson just does beat the tag. So the North All-Stars opening things up here in this inning. As they have scored five runs. will be the ninth batter in the inning with just still one out. So two are behind the inning for McDonald. Two more from Robert Cummins. Golly drove in a run as well. There's an off-speed pitch for a strike to Parker Phillips. He made the last out of the last inning on a 5-3 ground out to Santos at third base. But he's the ninth batter to hit in this inning. No balls and a strike to Phillips, who he's out in front of that. Breaking pitch, goes down to one knee to swing, and now he's bent down to the count 0-2. Tyler Cox is on deck. He started the inning with a big swing and a miss, and then he was hit by the next pitch. He scored the first run of the game earlier this frame. 5 nothing. the North All-Stars have the lead. There's an off-speed pitch, tapper back to the mound. Tanner Allen's only play is going to be at first base. He throws it over there, caught by his teammate with... The Ozark Generals, Dylan Skinner, and that will be the second out in the inning. Both runners move up 90 feet, so two in scoring position now for Tyler Cox. 
Bees at third base. Cummins is at second. Coxian was hit by a pitch to start the inning. The 10th batter in the inning. Tyler was not on the original roster, but was added with an injury taking place earlier this week. So Tyler Cox was added to the roster. He made the start in tonight's game. He was close on being one of the all-star outfielders. There's an off-speed pitch that's a strike number one. He was close to being a all-star anyway, but then was added immediately when one of the guys went down to the outfield. They were down to just two outfielders because two of them got hurt. There's a big swing and a miss. 0-2 to Cox. And he strikes out a lot, but he's hit three homers, driven in 13 this year, hitting 280 for the Mustangs. There's the 0-2. It's upstairs. Try to get him to chase one he did not. Cox at 280 average, excuse me, 14 RBI, three homers, 14 RBI. Curveball, a ground ball towards short, charging to make the play as Vega. He'll throw to first base and got him, and that will retire Tyler Cox. But they send 10 men to the plate, score five runs after three. The North All-Stars lead the South by a score of 5 nothing. This is the Mink League All-Star game on ESPN 1550. Man, if your business ain't at the top of the list, you're going to have to get with this. We talking SEO. Eagle Web Services. That's right, SEO. All you businesses out there, you got to listen up right here. Allow me to introduce a man who speaks the truth when it comes to me and you and how we use the internet. His name's Jess. He's the best. He's on a quest to take your web presence to the top of the list. We talking Google in this. Oh, how about Facebook in it? No, he's not going to quit till you got all them clicks, till you rolling in hits. We talking. J-E-S-S. Boom! Jess, getting all up in your business. Eagle Web Services. Jess, with Eagle Web Services. You know you want this. SEO, Google Ads, Facebook, websites, whatever. Jess can do it all. Contact Jess at EagleWebServices.com. It's time to get your bogey, eagle, and birdie on the dance floor. Tee off at Duncan Hills Golf Course in Savannah, where you'll find 18 holes of magnificent greens. They offer more than just quality, affordable golf. Take advantage of tee times at a special price when you visit them online. Dust off those clubs, grab your family and a group of friends, and let the games begin. Make Duncan Hills Golf Course in Savannah your next golfing experience. Duncan Hills Golf, where a bad day at golf always beats a good day at work. Duncan Hills, GC. This is St. Joe's Hall for Sports ESPN. ESPN. 1550. Dave Rigger back inside Phil Welt Stadium. Thanks for joining me for Mustangs, excuse me, Mink League Baseball tonight. Mink League All-Star Game this evening. As all the Mink League teams, including the St. Joseph Mustangs, have the night off. But most teams get back in action tomorrow night. And a new pitcher for the Mink League at North as they have a 5-0 lead. Five runs on four hits in the third inning. We're in the top of the fourth now. And John Milan from the St. Joseph Mustangs will get the fourth inning tonight. And John has been almost unhittable this year. <laughs> 25 innings, he'll have 11 hits. He has a 0.36 ERA, and he has 4-0 and this season. And so he'll be a senior at Cameron University in Lawton, Oklahoma. He's from El Paso, Texas. He was born in Puerto Rico. We talked to him earlier today at Uncle D's, but great kid. Pretty cool story. There's a big swing and a foul back from Tyler Pagano, the left fielder. Pagano in the three hole, three, four, and five for the South All Stars. They try and get something back here against Milan in the fourth. As Tanner Allen of the Ozark Generals gave up five in the bottom of the third inning. Breaking pitch goes to the backstop. A couple of defensive changes already here in the game as Ross McWhorter from Chillicothe now playing first base. He came in for Cummins, who drove in a couple of runs. And also behind the plate is Brady Anderson from the St. Joseph Mustangs. So Anderson is going to catch his teammate, John Milan. The Mustangs right now have four of their seven All-Stars in the game at the same time. As Cox is in right, McDonald's at short, Anderson at catcher, and John Milan is on the hill. Foul ball makes it 1-2 and two to Pagano. Pagano is 0 for 1 with a ground out to the second baseman his last time up. Two balls and two strikes the count. Milan, again, I mentioned 4-0 with a 0-3-6 ERA. He struck out 19, walked 12, and there's a pop foul off to the right side. 
Two and two the count. Milan went to Coronado High School in El Paso, Texas. Went to Western Texas College for two seasons. He made 13 relief appearances and had four saves at Cameron this past year. He's been a starter and a reliever this year for the Mustangs. There's a breaking pitch that, boy, had a great break on it, but just missed inside. So now it's a three ball and two strike count. See if Milan can get the out. Pagano swings in a chopper toward second base, charging as Byler. The Chillicothe Mudcat will make the play, and that will retire the first batter here in the fourth inning. Only one hit so far. That was a leadoff single back in the second by J.C. Santos of the South. A couple of fielders' choice after that. There was a hit by pitch in the third inning, but they've only had two runners get on base, and Santos now will bat left-handed as he digs in again. So Milan retires the first man. 5-0, the North All-Stars have the lead here in the top of the fourth inning. Big swing and a miss by Santos as he is playing third base. Again, he is from the Joplin Outlaws. Santos, 273 average, no homers and four RBIs this summer. No one low and inside, almost hit his back foot on that breaking pitch. One ball, one strike to count. Along this past year at Cameron University, Owen, one of the 6 one seven area and 13 relief appearances. Oh, I mentioned the four saves. 11 and two-thirds innings. Here's the 1-1 back up the middle, and it will get through for a base hit. Milan almost got it, and then Byler wasn't able to get to it in time, and it trickles to the outfield grass. And Santos has both hits for the South All-Stars in the game. A one-out single. And that brings up Dylan Skinner from the Ozark Generals, who was playing first base for the South All-Stars. Everybody else in the field is the same. I mentioned McWhorter now at first base. Anderson behind the plate. Everybody else has remained the same. Still Phillips and McDonald at third and short on the left side of the infield. Breaking pitch called strike one on the inside corner. Skinner 0 for 1. He was out on a fielder's choice to second base his last time up. Judah Zikafus is on deck. No balls and a strike. There's a fastball off the end of the bat. He cued it off by the dugout down the first baseline. So Milan way ahead of Dylan Skinner now is John Milan in his second summer with the Mustangs. He joined the Mustangs late last year, and he made just three appearances and went three and one-third innings, so didn't play much. He joined them late on a road trip to Sedalia, pitched a little bit in that game, had a 2.70 ERA. Fastball was outside for a 1-2 count, now to Skinner. Couldn't check his swing, went around, great breaking pitch that time, and John Milan gets the strikeout. So he's swing and a miss, and Skinner is retired for the second time. That'll bring up Judah Zikafus. Zikafus from Westview, Indiana. 6'5", 205. He's had a pretty impressive year so far as well. He has 10 doubles this year. One of a handful of guys that have been able to get double-figure doubles so far this season. He's hitting 341 with a homer and 16 RBI. He played at Arizona Western College for two years, and he's signed to play at Northwestern Oklahoma State in Division II school. And they're fastball running in on him. He swings and misses. So no balls and a strike with two down. We're in the top of the fourth inning. Five nothing. The North All-Stars have the lead. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Popped him up, but it's going to drift out of play. A foul down the third baseline. Hit the roof here at Phil Welch. 0-2 the count with two down. John Milan trying to work a scoreless fourth inning. It'll likely be his only inning of work. There's pitches. Going to miss a little bit low. <laughs> Every single player, including Brady Anderson, they were headed toward the dugout. They thought that was going to be strike three. Anderson was, the, he was probably three steps toward the dugout. But every player in the field took steps toward the dugout. I'm not sure I've seen a pitch where every player was going to the dugout. Now a chopper toward short. McDonald has to hurry, makes the throw, but a good stretch by McWhorter as he digs it out of the dirt. And a good play by McDonald again to charge and make the throw. A 6-3 ground out to end the inning and a 17-pitch inning for an 18-pitch inning 
for John Milan. The St. Joseph Mustang ace gets out of the fourth inning. We're to the bottom half of the fourth. It's a 5-0 lead for the North All-Stars here in the Mink League All-Star game from Phil Welch right here on ESPN 1550. From the first building block to the last coat of paint, Menards is here to help. Get an 11% rebate on everything in the store, even sale prices. Save on PPG pre-finished fiber cement siding with an 11% rebate available with either one coat 15-year or two coat 25-year paint warranty. Save big money and get an 11% rebate on everything, even sale prices. Now at Menards. Sale ends July 9th. Some exclusions apply. See store for details. Save big money at Menards. Man, if your business ain't at the top of the list, you're going to have to get with this. We talking SEO. Eagle Web Services. That's right, SEO. All you businesses out there, you got to listen up right here. Allow me to introduce a man who speaks the truth when it comes to me and you and how we use the internet. His name's Jess. He's the best. He's on a quest to take your web presence to the top of the list. We talking Google in this. Oh, how about Facebook in it? No, he's not going to quit till you got all them clicks, till you roll it in hits. We talking J-E-S-S. -S. Boom! Jess, getting all up in your business. Eagle Web Services. Jess, with Eagle Web Services. SEO, Google Ads, Facebook, websites, whatever. Jess can do it all. Contact Jess at EagleWebServices.com. This is St. Joe's Home for Sports. ESPN. ESPN. We go to the bottom half of the fourth inning here in the Mink League All-Star Game from Phil Welch Stadium in St. Joseph. I am Dave Rigert. It's a pleasure to have you along tonight. As we'll be have a new pitcher on the mound again for the South All-Stars as Tanner Allen gave up five on four hits last inning. But a new pitcher today, and it'll be Jake. Excuse me, Jack Burke. Just wrapped up his freshman year at Louisiana Lafayette. He's a raging Cajun. He was a redshirt this past year, but Lafayette, a team that hosted a regional this season. Unfortunately for them, they got beaten in the regional, but again, they were one of the top 16 teams in the country. They got a chance to host a regional this year. It was a redshirt for them. A young man from New Orleans, Louisiana, went to Jesuit High School. 6'2", 200-pound right-hander so far this summer. He's made full relief appearances. He's, he joined them late because of Lafayette's long run, but he joined them late, and he's appeared in four games, no decisions, with a 0 0.93 ERA. He's given up one earned run in nine and two-thirds innings, allowed just five hits, and he has 16 Ks and two walks in nine and two-thirds innings. He has a whip of 0 0.72, so he is a very impressive Freshman for Louisiana Lafayette. Now with the Innovator Griffins. He and Brad Coyos, the catcher, trying to get on the same page now to make sure that they have their signs right because obviously these guys haven't worked together before. The fourth pitcher in the game is Zach Maskell started, went one in, gave up two hits, no runs. Then Aaron Barto had a perfect one, two, three second inning, and then Allen got into some trouble with the five runs. All were earned. He had one walk, two hit batters, and gave up four hits in those ten batters that he faced. There's a big swing and a miss by Jake Byler, who is the second baseman from Chillicothe. He swings and misses as Jack Burke gets ahead, no balls, and a strike. Five nothing here in the top of, make it the bottom of the fifth inning. Excuse me, bottom of the fourth inning. Getting ahead of myself. There's another big swing and a miss. 0-2. Oh, Burke, not a big guy, but brings it in there pretty good. Has good velocity. He's 6'2", 200 pounds, a little bigger than I thought. At least that's what the roster says. Right-hander from New Orleans comes set way ahead now. Of the nine-hole hitter for the North All-Stars, Evan McDonald is on deck. And another big swing and a miss. Boy, three consecutive fastballs thrown right by Byler. And now Byler gives a couple of words of encouragement or a couple of words of advice, I guess I should say, to Evan McDonald. But the St. Joseph Mustang shortstop for the North is two for two with a triple, two RBI, and a run score. He has just continued his hot streak right now here in this All-Star game. McDonald bats right-handed. I'm guessing the baseball looks like a beach ball to him right now. There's a fastball line to right center field. Zikafusto has a beat on it, and he has a good angle toward it in right center field. 
Cuts it off and makes the catch. So McDowell hit it well after three straight swings and misses by Byler, and he'll fly out to right. So two up, two down. Jack Burke has made quick work of the first two batters, and now it'll be Quade Smith. Smith popped up with McDowell at third base. He popped up in the infield as the second baseman got it his last time up. Single to right back in the first inning, was stranded at third base after a stolen base. He bats left-handed. Nick Galley is on deck. There's a pitch low and away for ball one. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Quade Smith, an all-star this summer after not playing a ton. 21 starts, not even quite half the game, so 21 starts for Nichols State this past year. He slices one down the left field line foul. Goes up over the bounce house here at Phil Welch. 1-1 one, one the count as that evens things up. Smith was a junior. He spent two years at Heinz Community College in Mississippi. Junior college there. And his first year with Nickel State was last season. As Nickel State was 26-30, and 30, and they went 14-16 and 16 in their league play. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Off-speed misses inside and low. Two balls and a strike with two down here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Trying to get the North All-Stars. One, two, three for the second time in four innings. The bad thing, though, they would send 10 minutes of the play in the third. There's a 2-1. Fastball just tapped it foul back behind home plate. That evens it up. Two balls, two strikes. Burke has only thrown eight pitches, and he's one strike, one out away from going 1-2-3. Now Coyo's going to go walk the ball out to him. I don't know if the home plate umpire got maybe hit with that foul ball and just Coyos doing the gentlemanly thing that the catcher and the umpire usually do together. Some One of them gets hit, the other one will go talk to the pitcher, do something. So Coyos goes back behind home plate. And I think he did get nicked by that one because they're talking right now. He's checking to see if he's okay. So Smith, a 2-2 count, digs back in, again swings it left-handed. Playing left field, excuse me, center field tonight. Burt comes set, the right-hander with a high leg kick and a off-speed pitch. He swung and missed, and that will retire Quade Smith for the third out in the inning. We go to the fifth after four. It's a 5-0 lead for the North All-Stars here in the Mink League All-Star game. Phil Welch Stadium in St. Joseph here on ESPN 1550. You know, Alex, sometimes it helps to have an expert opinion. Like for sports analysis, you want to listen to a guy who actually played professional sports. Or a respected sports journalist. Yeah, sure, if we're talking $500 haircuts, I think you'd have a lot to say. It was $400. But if you're looking for a great set of tires, Trust Goodyear, from fire trucks to race cars, Goodyear tires offer superior performance and handling. And everything they learn making tires for expert drivers inspires what they roll into yours. Go to Goodyear.com to find the right tire and store for you. Goodyear, more driven. As outdoorsmen, the guys at JMB Outdoors know your time is precious, and you'd rather be spending more of it in the woods, more on the water. In addition to the retail store at the corner of Pickett and Leonard Road in St. Joseph, they now have a huge line of outdoor gear right at your fingertips. So shop online at www.jmboutdoors.com. It's packed full of firearms, shooting accessories, hunting gear, archery supplies, optics, apparel, and so much more. Most products can ship directly to your door. Visit the site, jmboutdoors.com. Your trailer is a workhorse. Hauling farm equipment, falling trees, drywall, bags of feed, fill dirt, it really takes a beating. And nothing holds up to that beating like a quality built steel trailer from Finish Line. And right now at Metzger Sales and Service, they have some great deals on Finish Line trailers like a car hauler 82 by 16 for $29.99 or a 5 by 10 single axle dump box for $21.99. Come check them all out at Metzger Sales and Service in Graham. Online at Metzger.com. This is St. Joe's Hall for Sports ESPN. ESPN 1350. We're at the top of the fifth inning here in the Mink League All-Star Game. The second annual Mink League All-Star Game is the North All-Stars right now have the lead on the South All-Stars. Looks like there's a change at second base right now, and I believe it is Mondesi Gutierrez who is now playing at second base. He usually plays shortstop for the 
Lorenda A's, but I believe he is now going to take over at second base. So Gutierrez is at second for the North All-Stars. 5-0, the North leads the South, a new pitcher for the North team from Chillicothe. And that will be James Etheridge, who just wrapped up his sophomore year at Valdosta State down in Georgia. He is from Mount Vernon, Georgia. In eight relief appearances this summer, he has gone 2-0 with a 1.08 earned run average. He has thrown 16 and two-thirds innings, allowed 11 hits, struck out 20, and walked seven so far this season. He's only allowed two earned runs in 16 and two-thirds innings. For the South All-Stars, Cal Thurman, the only representative from the Branson Nationals, will bat. He's the DH. There was supposed to be another one, but he decided he didn't want to play in the game, so Kyler Robertson didn't play. And Cal Thurman from O'Fallon, Missouri, and again for the Branson Nationals, as they've had a rough year. He fouls one away here for a one-strike count. Branson just 2-27 and 27 this year. In the South, Joplin leads by one game over Nevada. They are 14-9. The Outlaws are. The Griffins are 13-10. Ozark is 13-12, two games back. Off-speed is low from Etheridge. Branson 2-27. They are 15 games back, if you're counting, here at the All-Star break. So that'll be a three-team race to try and get two teams into that Mink League tournament. Here's the 1-1. Big swing and a miss by Thurman. Thurman has struck out 19 times, walked only six. He's up there usually swinging away. He was in the home run derby for the Branson Nationals. He hit five in his round, but got knocked out by Brad Coyos, the catcher for Ozark. One-two pitch, got him swing and miss. Anderson will have to throw down to first base. He does, and that'll be a strikeout for James Etheridge. Now it'll be Nick Gatto, the second baseman for the South All-Stars. I think the change at second is the only change so far for the North. As Mondesi Gutierrez, again, is out there. Rick Warder still out at first base. Anderson behind the plate. The other guys are the same as what we've seen throughout the entire game thus far. 5-0, our score, top of the fifth inning. Here's the pitch from Etheridge. Misses a little bit low for ball number one. Nick got his 0 for 1 of the game. Got a struck out, swinging his first time up to start the third inning. And he played at Northwest Missouri State. There's a fastball for a strike outside corner. And only two hits so far in the game for the South All-Stars, and they're both from J.C. Santos, the third baseman. There's a tap foul back behind home plate. So Etheridge way ahead, no balls, excuse me, one ball and two strikes to Gata. Got it. Northwest Missouri State this past year. Hit 299, three homers and 35 RBI. Mentioned the 250 average so far this summer. Pitch outside, makes it two balls and two strikes. I mentioned the on base average for Gata this summer. And again, he's walked eight more times than he struck out. He's on base 412 is his on base average. Well, this past year at Northwest Missouri State, he only struck out 14 times in 53 games. And he walked 45 times. So he walked three times as many times as he struck out. That's a very impressive number. Great eye at the plate. Now he's worth the count of 3-2. And he stays alive just by hacking at this one and slicing it down the left field line out of play. So he's a tough guy to strike out, which he did strike out the first time up. But he's normally going to battle you, do things like that, just to stay alive and get the pitch that he wants or make you throw a ball. By way of his 45 walks this year. Now he slices one down the left field line, but it will be foul. So again, he stays alive. Second hitter in this inning. We're in the fifth. Brad Coyos is on deck, the catcher. Etheridge wants a new ball, so he'll get one. This will be the eighth pitch of the at-bat that Nick Gatta sees. A lot of quality ABs from Gatta. Two years at Fullerton College, then at Northwest Missouri State. He is from San Diego, California. 3-2 with one out, nobody on base, and he swings and misses. Breaking ball got him. A good battle, but Etheridge has now struck out the first two batters he's faced here in the fifth inning. So now it's the nine-hole hitter, Brad Coyos, the catcher for the Ozark Generals and the South All-Stars. The other catcher on the roster is Jake McPhail from Nevada. We'll probably see him here shortly. 
Indians. We'll be halfway home after this half inning. There's a curveball that gets away from Anderson. No damage done. Nobody's on base. First two have been retired here in the fifth inning. 5 nothing. North All-Stars have the lead. Here's the one ball pitch, and it's fouled back to the screen. I mentioned the south race is pretty tight with the top three teams. Same thing in the north. St. Joseph 18 and 8 in the Mink League. Game and a half back is Sedalia at 18 and 11. Chillicat, he's at 15 and 10 as they are two and a half games back. And then Clarenda is six games back at 14 and 16. It's a little bit more depth with all four teams being fairly good in the north as opposed to the south with a three team race. 1 1 in the dirt, two balls and a strike. St. Joseph has won seven consecutive games, so right now they have the advantage, and they're playing very good baseball. They beat Sedalia and Chillicothe earlier this week to extend their lead. Pitch just misses outside, now 3-1. and one. Two outs, nobody on base, trying to avoid a two-out walk. Etheridge plays again at Valdosta State. Only appeared in four games this past year for Valdosta State, 0-1 with a 20.25 ERA. Fouls this one away to make it a full count, three and two. Fastball down the middle. So Etheridge trying to go one, two, three. He only threw in one and one third innings. Gave up three hits, but walked four, didn't strike out a batter as Valdosta went 27 and 17 this past year. They were 19 and 12 in their conference. Three and two to count again with two down. Nobody on base, a five nothing game here in the top of the fifth. And this one misses outside, so Coyos will walk the nine hole hitter. As he is on base. Etheridge lost him and now back to the top of the order. That'll bring up Kainalu Patoy. Patoy 0 for 1. He was hit by a pitch his last time up. He had a ground ball to the first baseman. At the time it was Robert Cummins. So he was out 3 unassisted, so officially 0 for 1 of the game. He's been on base one time and stranded. There's a first pitch fastball right down the middle. And Patoya, 375 average with three homers and 12 RBI for Nevada so far this year. He bats left-handed, plays center field for the Griffins and for the South All-Stars. They are down 5-0. There's a line drive to shortstop, and it's going to be caught by Evan McDonald, and that will end the inning. We go to the bottom half of the fifth, halfway home here in the Mink League All-Star game. It's 5-0. The North All-Stars lead the South, and this is the Mink League All-Star game on ESPN 1550. thing, QL1. What's that control? You've been talking a lot about Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans lately. What would you say is the best reason to use it? Well, it's completely online. It's easy to use. You can get approved in minutes. It's convenient. You can share your pay stubs and bank statements at the touch of a button so you get real numbers, not estimates. And Hey, uh, QL1, I asked for the best reason. Yeah, go ahead and pick one. Anyone. That's tough. They all sound great. I think you're finally getting it, Control. Three, two, one. Rocket Mortgage at QuickenLoans.com. Push button. Get mortgage. Rocket. Visit for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLSConsumeraccess.org number 3030. As a Buchanan County Commissioner, Dan Hausman has worked with many great county employees. He's also helped hundreds of people in the county. He's led the way in helping reduce costs and has held the line on county taxes. Hundreds of thousands of dollars have been saved through better purchasing and working smarter. Economic development has always been a top priority. He's helped create over 2,600 new jobs and brought in over $825 million in new investments in Buchanan County. Experience counts. Vote for Dan Hausman, Eastern District Commissioner. I'm Dan Hausman. This message is paid for by the citizens for Dan Hausman, Donnie Miller, Treasurer. The same code being used to protect the finish on that airplane can also be used on your car, truck, RV, and even motorcycle. Aviation Frog Polish, trademarked by Metzger Sales and Service Incorporated. It's a microscopic, invisible protective coating that repels dirt and water, reduces friction, and actually improves gas mileage. Use it on almost any surface, vinyl, plastic, fiberglass, rubber, polished metals. Frog Polish is easy to use. Just mist on, wipe, and then wipe again in a few minutes. Pick it up at Metzger Sales and Service in Graham or at Metzger.com. 
BaltimoreOrioles.com. As legendary Baltimore Orioles manager Earl Weaver once said, the key to winning baseball is pitching, fundamentals, and three-run home runs. At Rock Ridge Steel, the key to winning is quality products, quick delivery, and exceptional customer service. Rock Ridge Steel offers steel from one inch to one truckload to contractors, farmers, and city folk, too, for home improvements. So when you need steel, see a winner. That's Dan Riley at Rock Ridge Steel in Elwood, Kansas. Rock Ridge Steel. Rock solid steel at rock bottom prices. Proud sponsor of the St. Joe Mustangs. This is St. Joe's Hall for Sports. ESPN. ESPN. 1550. Bottom half of the fifth inning here at the Mink League All-Star Game from St. Joseph. As we are at Phil Welch Stadium this evening. And the North All-Stars lead the South All-Stars by a score of 5 to nothing. New pitcher into the game is Reed Bukowski. Right-hander, submarine sidearm style pitcher from the Nevada Griffin. So far this year, Bukowski, young man from Grapevine, Texas, went to Clarendon College, junior college down in Texas. 5,975 pound right-hander is 0-1 with a 1.23 ERA. He's made eight relief appearances in seven and one-third innings. He's allowed just seven hits, has three Ks and one walk, but a 1.23 earned run average. And he will face two, three, and four make it 3-4-5 and five for the North All-Stars. Nick Galley, Eric Wegman, and then Brady Anderson for the North All-Stars. 5 nothing. As they're waiting on something. I'm not sure what they're waiting on right now. And now stepping in is Nick Galley. He is one for two in the game. He singled, drove in a run, and scored a run in that five-run third inning. So the senior to be at Missouri Western is one for two in the game. He was out in the first inning on a 5-3 ground out to the third baseman, Santos. One ball, no strikes to count. Bukowski jammed him. He popped up to shallow right field. Zikafus comes in, but going out is the second baseman, Gata, and he will make the catch. So a Bearcat retires a Griffin here to lead off the bottom half of the fifth inning. Couple of pitches and one out. That brings up the cleanup man, Eric Wegeman. Wegeman had a base hit that drove in two runs his last time up. As he singled to left field. He bats right-handed, and he checks the swing, but it is a called strike anyway. So he's down to the count, no balls and a strike. Wegeman singled. Back in the third, he struck out in the first inning, so he's one for two in the game. That sidearm stays inside. Good slider from Bukowski. Started out at Wegeman, but was too far inside. One ball, one strike to count. Brady Anderson is on deck for his first appearance at the plate as he is now the catcher for the North All-Stars. Again, they've got a 5-0 lead. Now there's slider. There's another called strike. Kind of buckled the knees of Wegeman, but it ended up on the outside corner. So a called strike number two from Reed Bukowski to Eric Wegeman. Wegman again plays for the Clarenda A's. They've got the all-powder blues. The A's are wearing the all-powder blues tonight. Two balls and two strikes as this pitch misses outside. One out, nobody on base. Again, north leading south, 5-0. Fastball just missed outside. Tried to sneak that fastball by him. Doesn't have tremendous velocity, but when he throws a slider that he does, you can sneak that fastball by a lot of, a lot of people. Almost got the call that time, did not. And now it's a full count, three and two. Only one walk this summer and won't get a walk here. Chopper back near second base. Going to his left is Sam Vega. He'll cut it off for gets to the bag and he will throw him out. So Bukowski and deuces a ground ball back behind the pitching mound in front of second base and Vega charges, grabs it and throws out Eric Wegeman. 6-3 ground out for the second out in the inning. And that will bring up Brady Anderson of the St. Joseph Mustangs. Anderson in 21 games is hitting 346 for St. Joseph. Two homers, 11 RBI, and now hits one deep to right field. Zikafus goes back to the track, and he makes the catch, leaping up. So he robs Brady Anderson of extra bases. Zikafus was playing really deep anyway. Good thing he was, because he was hit to the warning track in right field. So Anderson flies out to right, a 1-2-3 inning. And we go to the sixth. After five complete, the North All-Stars lead the South 5-0 as we continue with the Mink League All-Star game right here on ESPN 1550. 
Midwest Central Outdoor, your outdoor answers for any season. Right now, 0% interest for up to 48 months with qualifying credit on all Hustler, Wright, and Walker mowers. Yep, 0% interest for up to 48 months with qualified credit. Get to Midwest Central Outdoor and get the mower you've been dreaming about. Customer service is Midwest Central Outdoor's number one priority. They have a highly skilled service center and stand behind all sales and service. Midwest Central Outdoor, off Highway 71, just north of 129 and exit 53. Do you have pawn and payday loans all over town? Are you finding it hard to keep track of your due dates and fear losing your possessions because you miss a payment? Hi, this is Dennis Kovac at American Gold Mine Pawn and Payday Loan Supercenter. We have a solution. Bring all your loans to us and build a portfolio with our highly trained loan associates who care about you and are trained to work with you in a way that prevents losing your loans. No need to be embarrassed when you get in a tight spot and need extra cash to make it to payday. This is our business and we want you to be comfortable allowing us to meet all your financial needs, not just some of them. At American Gold Mine, you can ask any loan associate or have your very own to help you keep track of what you have, when it is due, and even work payment schedules, and in some cases, even a complimentary extension. Come to where you don't feel like you're at the License Bureau, but you are cheerfully greeted by name and are more than just the next number in line. That's American Gold Mine, Belt and 36 Highway, where we always have the cash drawer open for you. Have you ever dreamed of owning your own golf cart? Whether it's to get around your farm, visit your neighbor, or take to the campground, use it on the job, or for hitting the links. Go to Midwest Central Outdoor now for up to 24 months with no interest with qualifying credit. Dreaming of having a golf cart can become reality with an Easy Go Golf Cart. Midwest Central Outdoor is Northwest Missouri's authorized Easy Go Golf Cart dealership. Midwest Central Outdoor, right off 71 Highway, I-29, exit 53. This is St. Joe's Hall for Sports ESPN. ESPN, 1530. We continue with the Mink League All-Star Game from St. Joseph's Phil Welch Stadium, the second annual edition of this All-Star Classic. We go to the top of the sixth inning. The Mustang, excuse me, the North All Stars have a six to nothing or five nothing lead here in the sixth inning. And a couple of replacements now for the North All Stars on defense is Brett Marr from the Mustangs has taken the place of his teammate Evan McDonald to play short, and Jonathan Ramon from Sedalia will play third base now. I mentioned Gutierrez at second base, McWhorter at first, and the outfield remains the same. I believe those are the only outfielders they have available because the other two. That were in the All-Star game and in the lineup got hurt the last couple days, so they were down to two outfielders, so Tyler Cox got at it. It's a one ball count and a drive down the right field line is going to get into foul territory as Tyler Cox goes up and he goes up and over the chain link fence and has to jump back over it as he couldn't quite get to it in time. So first pitch ball and a foul ball down the right field line after that is Sam Vega. As he is the shortstop. And actually, they are pinch hitting, I beg your pardon. So they've got a pinch hitter for Vega. It is Sam Wetrich. That is his teammate as he is playing. No, it's not. Vega plays for Joplin. Excuse me. I'll figure it out. There's a liner to left, and that'll get down for a base hit. So Vega the shortstop, but now they bring in Wetrich from Nevada to play short, and he gets a base hit to right field. So just the third hit in the game for the South All-Stars, but Wetrich will lead off with a base hit. Now we'll have another new bat in the lineup. Now they're going to keep Pagano in there. It looked like it was going to be somebody else, but Pagano will stay in there. So Tyler Pagano will bat now for the South All-Stars with a leadoff single from Tanner Wetrich. Pagano was 0 for 2 so far in the game. Blaine Fisher's the new pitcher, and the ball gets away. A wild pitch to the backstop, and that'll be an easy advance for Wetrich to second base. So Tanner Wetrich now in a scoring position. And Pagano in the three hole. Again, 0 for 2. He had a 4 3 ground out to second in the fourth inning. Did the same thing back in the first. So two ground outs to the second baseman. It was Byler at the time. Now it's Gutierrez. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Curveball check swing back behind home plate. It was fouled away. Blaine Fisher, the pitcher now, lefty from Sedalia. He plays at Pittsburgh State. He's from Olathe, Kansas, 6 feet, 180 pound left hander. 1 0 with a 1.65 ERA. He's allowed eight runs, but only three have been earned this year. He's only allowed nine hits in 16 and one third innings. Here's the 1 1. 
Chopper wide of third base will be a foul ball to make it a one ball and two strike count. Fisher has struck out 17 and walked seven in 16 and one third innings, has a whip of 0 0.98. And we're in the top of the sixth inning. It's a 5 0 North All Star lead here in the Mink League All Star game. Here's the 1 2. Fastball, chopper up the middle. Will it get through? It will. And rounding third base and scoring without a throw is Tanner Wetrick. So the wild pitch allows a man to score. And the St. Joseph Mustangs, or excuse me, the South All-Stars now get on the board. 5-1 to one our score now as the South tries to chip away as Blaine Fisher gives up a run. Lead-off single, advanced on the wild pitch, now a single through. So they had only had two hits this entire game until those back-to-back -back hits to start the sixth inning. And the man that had the first two hits of the game was the man to play now, J.C. Santos. Two for two so far in the game. Bats left-handed. There's an off-speed pitch, low and away. Good stop by Brady Anderson behind the plate. So Blaine Fisher. He's got into some trouble here in the sixth inning, but the South All-Stars get on the board. Five to one now our score. There's a fastball down the middle for strike one. J.C. Santos has played in 18 games. 273 average, no homers and four RBI, but two for two here at the All-Star game. Here's the 1-1. One, one. It is low and away. Two balls and one strike from Blaine Fisher to J.C. Santos. Looks like we'll have a new batter up next. Cole Johnson looks like he is on deck now for Tyler Skinner. There's a swinging bunt in front of the plate, and there'll be a good play by... Blaine Fisher, the pitcher to grab it, throw to first base, and that will retire J.C. Santos. Gets a man to second base, though. He's in scoring position with one down. That's Pagano now at second base. And Cole Johnson will bat for Dylan Skinner. So Cole Johnson from Nevada will bat. As he will play first base now. Skinner in the game, struck out once and had a fielder's choice and a ground ball to second base so he was 0 for 2 in the game and now Johnson bats for the first time. Johnson a 275 average for Nevada with no homers and 9 RBI. He plays at Pacific Lutheran University in California. Excuse me, in Tacoma, Washington, I beg your pardon. He went to Washington State for a year and now is at Pacific Lutheran. He cues one down to third base off the end of the bat. Ramon takes his time, throws it high to first base, but a great play by the first base McWhorter to jump up and apply the tag for the second out in the inning. It holds the runner Pagano at, third, at second base. So Ramon airmailed that one a little bit, but McWhorter is pretty tall. They list him only at 6'2". He looks a lot taller than that. But it is a 5'3 ground out nonetheless on a very, very good play. So Pagano stays put at second base. And now there are two outs for Judah Zikafus. He is the right fielder, and Zikafus 0 for 2 in the game. Lefty-lefty matchup here. Curveball stays high. Zikafus with a 6-3 ground out to short his last time up, and then reaching a fielder's choice to short in the second inning, and then stole a base and was stranded at third. That came back in the second inning. Zikafus. Again, played at Arizona Western for two years. He is signed to play at Northwestern Oklahoma State. At 273 with four homers and 24 RBI at Arizona Western this past season. Fisher with the 1 0, the left hander, brings it home and a good off speed pitch. And way out in front of that was Judah Zikafus. It's now a one ball, one strike count. His teammate at Nevada is Tyler Pagano. He sits at second base. And his teammate at Nevada, Tanner Wittrich, began the inning with a single and he scored the one run so far in the inning for the South. Here's the 1 1. Ooh, chased a bad fastball up and in. That was ball two. And he swung out of his shoes that time. And now the umpire has collapsed back behind home plate. He is laying on his back with his arms out. And I'm not sure if he got hit or what, but he has passed out on his back. And they are trying to see if he is not, he is not moving at all. Now he moved his head just a little bit. But he collapsed and fell on his back. 
I don't think he got hit. I don't know if it's heat exhaustion or what's going on, but now they're bringing the EMT personnel over to check him out. But he is flat on his back. His, his arms are off to his side straight out. Now he's moving his arms, but, boy, he just collapsed and fell backward. He's onto the grass back behind the home plate area. There's a swing and a miss by Zikafus. And then he just collapsed and fell straight down and landed on his back. So now they are talking with him, and I don't know if he's overheating or what, but wow, this is scary. Well, as they check him out, now they're going to help him up. So he's going to sit up. Let's see if he tries to get up. I don't know if he'll continue. That would be tough for him too, but... As they still look at him, let's take a quick break, and we'll come back and try and give you an update if we can get one. But, boy, a scary situation here at the Mink League All-Star Game with the umpire back behind home plate, collapsing, but now sitting up and trying to talk to everybody. Let's get a quick break and 5-1 our score here in the Mink League All-Star Game in the top of the sixth inning on ESPN 1550. There are two universal truths that every ATV owner knows. ATVs are awesome. Middlemen are not. Scooters Power Sport services the brands you love. Polaris, Can-Am, Yamaha, Kawasaki, and Honda. And when you bring it in for service, no middleman. You'll talk directly to a mechanic who'll tell you what's wrong and the best way to fix it. They also carry new and used ATVs and side-by-sides and offer dealer financing at rates as low as 1.99%. Check them out online at ScootersPowerSports.com. Scooters Power Sports. Write it like you can afford to fix it. This summer, U.S. Cellular wants you to take a vacation from full price. How does 50% off smartphone sound? That's what I said. 50% off smartphones. Oh, yeah, it's on. Switch to the U.S. Cellular now and get 50% off great smartphones, like the Samsung Galaxy S7 and many others, only from the carrier with a stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. U.S. Cellular. Retail installment contract. New share connect plan. Smartphone turn-in device protection plus a $25 activation fee required. Rebate is 50% off device price before taxes or $336, whichever is lower. Rebate is a U.S. Cellular promo card issued by MetaBank member FDIC. Valid only for purchases at U.S. Cellular. Other issues and see over as legendary Baltimore Orioles manager Earl Weaver once said, the key to winning baseball is pitching, fundamentals, and three-run home runs. At Rockridge Steel, the key to winning is quality products, quick delivery, and exceptional customer service. Rockridge Steel offers steel from one inch to one truckload to contractors, farmers, and city folk, too, for home improvements. So when you need steel, see a winner. That's Dan Riley at Rockridge Steel in Elwood, Kansas. Rockridge Steel. Rock solid steel at rock bottom prices. Proud sponsor of the St. Joe Mustangs. Refrigerators? Nope. Dog food? Uh-uh. Flour, seed, and mulch? Negatory. Potato chips and milk? Not even a chip in sight. At Brown Lumber, we sell real hardware supplies without all the fluff. If you need competitively priced power tools, lumber, and building supplies, now we have that. Just a simple, straightforward, locally owned hardware store for hardworking folks who simply want to get in, get their supplies, and get on with their day. Brown Lumber Company at 5th and Patey. Lumber? <laughs> We have that. You take pride in your lawn. That's why you spend those extra hours making it look lush and pristine. You want to spend that time on your lawn, not on cleaning your mower. What if there was an easy button to clean and change your blades? Metzger Sales and Service now offers the new Raptor Flip-Up Mowers by Hustler with quick flip-up technology, effortless cleaning, automated deck height adjustment, and less storage space in a push of a button. Come check out the Raptor family today at Metzger Sales and Service in Graham. They will try to beat any deal on comparable equipment online at Metzger.com. This is St. Joe's Hall for Sports ESPN. ESPN 1550. Well, Stadium, and again, a scary situation here at Phil Welch as the umpire did collapse behind home plate. He, right now, they have taken him to the Mustangs clubhouse right now. He did not walk off under his own power. He had help from Matt Johnson and some others as well. And I think one of the other umpires has gone to get the gear to wear back behind home plate so they'll switch things up and have a new umpire back behind home plate but again he's up and he's responsive that's the good news right now again it was a scary situation but uh, he was up talking to folks getting some drink i think it i don't know if it was heat exhaustion i don't i don't think he got hit by the backswing of, of judah zikafus or anything like that I, I believe again i think he just collapsed and they went and got some water quickly so it might have just been heat related but they have him in the clubhouse right now, and there will be another umpire that will be back behind the home plate right now. Mustangs, excuse me, the Meek League All-Star Game, 5-1 to one our score. We are in the top of the sixth inning, but a little delayed now with the collapse of the umpire back behind home plate. 
Five runs, six hits, and no errors for the North All-Stars. One run, four hit, and no errors for the South All-Stars. But the South All-Stars trying to get back into it. They have scored a run here in the sixth inning, and they've got a runner at second base with two down and a 1-2 count right now to Judah Zikafus. So all nine players on the field for the North All-Stars are back behind the mound just kind of BSing right now. They're just talking to each other, seeing what's going on. But they're all back behind the pitcher's mound right now, just talking and waiting out this delay. I don't see any of the umpires right now, so they must be attending to the one behind home plate and then determining who's going to be behind the plate getting the gear on for him. Five to one our scores. We are in the second inning. One, two count, and let's get a quick break in. We'll come back with more from the Mink League All-Star game as we are at Philwell Stadium. In 5-1, the North All-Stars lead the South All-Stars with two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. We continue with the Mink League All-Star game on ESPN 15 Uh, pleasure to have you along tonight. It's the Mink League All-Star Game. Second edition of this annual affair as the Mustangs have seven representatives. The Mink League North All-Stars right now with a 5-1 to lead with two outs in the top of inning number six. And a long delay now as the umpire behind home plate collapsed after a swing and miss by Judah Zikafus. And now I see one of the umpires coming out from the clubhouse. And he now has the gear to be the home plate umpire on. So looks like it'll be a two umpire crew. Luckily, they had three umpires for this game. And they can still use two, which is what they normally do during a regular season game. So we're about to get back underway as Blaine Fisher will probably loosen up again, throw a few pitches and get ready to go. But again, our thoughts are now with the home plate umpire as he collapsed back behind home plate. He was up and responsive. They helped him off, but again, a scary situation here at Phil Welch. Hopefully he's okay. And again, he was out here for the home run derby as well, just being a judge to see if it was a fair or foul ball. So he was out in the heat since about five o'clock, had the gear on back behind home plate. So my guess, and again, it's just a guess, is that it was heat related. And all the players back in their positions, Blaine Fisher, 
throwing some warm-ups as the infielders are getting some ground balls as well. But now a new home plate umpire. And they're going to let Blaine Fisher warm up a little bit and get a few more reps in. J Judah Zikafus will be at the plate. One ball, two strikes to count on him. Zikafus is 0 for 2 so far in the game. Again, so far, the North All-Stars lead 5-1. to one. They have five runs on six hits. They scored all five of their runs in the third inning. The South All-Stars have come back with a run here in the sixth. They had just two hits prior to this inning, and then back-to-back -back hits from Wetrich and Pagano to lead off the sixth inning. And Pagano still at second base. As it looks like we are now set for baseball. So Zikafus, and after the long delay, it could be just one pitch to get out of this inning and go to the next half inning. But a new umpire behind the plate. They'll go with just two umps right now as the medical personnel checking with the home plate umpire that did collapse back behind home plate oh, about 10 minutes ago or so. So one, two count to Zikafus and Blaine Fisher digs back in. Two outs on the man at second base, five to one North All-Stars with the lead. Here's the pitch from Fisher and he fouls it back. One ball, two strikes to count, two outs. Here's the pitch. Ground ball wide of first base. It's over by the home team's dugout, which is the Mink League North down that first base line. So he stays alive. Here's the one-two again from Fisher. Got him to swing and miss. Breaking ball out of the strike zone, but he swings and misses, and that retires this side. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. It's a 5-1 to one Mink League North All-Star lead as we continue with the Mink League All-Star game right here on ESPN 1550. There's four things you love. Your family, your home, the Mustangs, and your car. East Ridge Car Washes can't help with the first three. But boy, can they help with your car. East Ridge Car Washes are St. Joe's premier drive through washes, offering wash options to fit any budget. Free vex, hand dry, and the only washes in town to completely remove icky summer bugs. To show your car some love. Come to East Ridge Car Wash behind Firestone on Village Drive, next to the Highway Patrol on the North Belt. Proud to sponsor your St. Joe Mustangs. As a Buchanan County Commissioner, Dan Hausman has worked with many great county employees. He's also helped hundreds of people in the county. He's led the way in helping reduce costs and has held the line on county taxes. Hundreds of thousands of dollars have been saved through better purchasing and working smarter. Economic development has always been a top priority. He's helped create over 2,600 new jobs and brought in over $825 million in new investments in Buchanan County. Experience counts. Vote for Dan Hausman, Eastern District Commissioner. I'm Dan Hausman. This message is paid for by the citizens for Dan Dan Hausman, Donnie Miller, Treasurer. There are two universal truths that every ATV owner knows. ATVs are awesome. Middlemen are not. Scooters Power Sport services the brands you love. Polaris, Can-Am, Yamaha, Kawasaki, and Honda. And when you bring it in for service, no middleman. You'll talk directly to a mechanic who will tell you what's wrong and the best way to fix it. They also carry new and used ATVs and side-by-sides and offer dealer financing at rates as low as 1.99%. Check them out online at ScootersPowerSports.com. Scooters Power Sports. Write it like you can afford to fix it. Hello, this is Lavelle Rucker. I encourage you to join me in voting for Gary Myers for circuit judge. Gary has 36 years of diverse legal experience and wrote the call before you dig statute which has saved countless lives. Gary has served as a leader with the American Red Cross, Family Guidance, Ag Expo and United Way. Vote Gary Myers circuit judge. This commercial is paid for by the committee to elect Gary Myers judge, Bertha Parker treasurer. This is St. Joe's Hall for Sports. ESPN. ESPN. 1550. We go to the bottom of the sixth our game. I am Dave Rigger. It's a pleasure to have you along. After about a 10 minute delay, after the umpire did collapse back behind home plate, Judah Zikafus was the last out in the last half inning, and now the North All Stars will bat. And they will face another new pitcher. As we will see a pitcher from the Joplin Outlaws. Trying to see the number. Can't see it yet. I'll let you know who it is here in just a second. And it is Brandon Sadler, who is signed to play at Missouri Southern. He's from Frisco, Texas. And he played two years at Eastfield College. And so far this summer, in nine and two-thirds innings, he's 2-0 with a zero ERA. 
He has allowed just five hits in seven appearances, nine and two-thirds innings. No runs, no earned runs. He has struck out 11 and walked zero in nine and two-thirds innings, a 0.52 whip, which is very impressive. So he is the new pitcher, Brandon Sadler, on the hill from the Joplin Outlaws. And again, he's from Texas, but he's going to play at Missouri Southern. And he's in town, and Southern is going to have him play for the Joplin Outlaws this summer. First pitch just misses inside for ball number one. To Ross McWhorter, who is now playing first base, has been out in the field for a couple innings, now gets his first at bat, grounder on the right side. Cole Johnson dives, knocks it down from his backside. He throws to first base and covering is Sadler makes a great play. Great play both ways with a dive of Johnson to stop it and then throwing from his backside and covering all in one motion. Johnson to Sadler and that retires. Ross McWhorter, who was robbed of a base hit, he's now 0 for 1 in the game. Great play. Now Jonathan Ramon will bat for the first time as he is now playing third base. It's a 5-1 lead here in the sixth inning. We're in the bottom half of the inning as Tyler Cox is on deck from the St. Joseph Mustangs. There's a foul off to the right side off the bat of Jonathan Ramon. He's in the seven hole now. Ramon just wrapped up his senior year at Evansville from Jackson Heights, New York. 294 average this summer, two homers and 19 RBI. He was an all-star a year ago as well. There's a curveball that's a called strike. So Sadler got him to swing and foul one away, and then he gets a called strike right there. So he's way ahead in the count. No balls and two strikes to Ramon. Ramon hit 320 with 10 homers and 39 RBI last year for Sedalia. There's a fastball up and in. A ball and two strikes now. So Sadler again hasn't walked a batter this season. So he's going to be around the plate for sure. Ramon has struck out nine times, walked six, been hit five times in the 13 games he's played for the Sedalia Bombers. Pitch in the dirt. Two balls, two strikes the count. Five to one is our score. North All-Stars lead the south. Here's a fly ball to right. Coming in is Zikafus, and he will dive and make the catch. Doe forward and a heck of a catch by Judah Zikafus and some great plays to start the bottom half of the sixth inning from a couple of Nevada Griffins. Mixed in with Sadler, the pitcher covering on the play from Johnson. The Zikafus with a diving catch in right. And that's the second out in the inning. That'll be Tyler Cox, the right fielder. From the St. Joseph Mustangs, looks at a pitch upstairs for ball one. Cox was hit by a pitch and scored a run in the five-run third inning, and also in that inning was out 6-3 in a ground ball to the shortstop. So his only two at-bats have come in one inning so far. They had four of their six hits in that inning and have not had a hit since that inning. The pitchers for the Nevada Griffins have retired now nine in a row. Going for number 10 right here. So the North has been shut down by the pitch. This one's outside, and all of a sudden it's a three ball and no strike count. A little tighter zone, I think, than what we had from the previous umpire. And here's a 3 0 fastball that he had the green light on and fouls it away. Three balls and a strike. Tyler Cox, again, a 280 average with three homers and 14 RBI for the St. Joseph Mustangs. There's a big swing and a miss again. Full count now, three and two to Tyler Cox. He plays at Maple Woods, hit 16 home runs this past year, and now he lines one to right center field. Now he'll get down for a base hit. Zikafus will cut that one off. But Tyler Cox with a base hit, and Evan McDonald had two hits from the Mustangs. And now another Mustang gets a base hit. St. Joseph Mustangs have three of the seven hits now for the North. That'll bring up to the plate Mondesi Gutierrez, his first appearance. As Gutierrez, sophomore from o Orange Coast College in California, 
He is from San Diego. He looks at a pitch outside for ball number one. Gutierrez hitting 277 this year with no homers and 16 RBI. He bats right-handed. Pitch a little bit low. Two balls and no strikes now. He fell behind. Sadler fell behind Cox. 3-0. Came back to throw three consecutive strikes, but Cox got the 3-2 pitch to land in right center field. Brett Maher is on deck. Now playing shortstop for Evan McDonald, his teammate with the St. Joseph Mustangs. 5-1 North All-Stars have the lead here in the bottom half of the sixth. Sadler's pitch is a ground ball towards short. Should be an easy force out. There's a shovel towards second. Valdez covers. Wetrich the flip to second base, and that will retire the side for the North. Through six, it's 5-1. The North All-Stars lead the South as we continue with the Mink League All-Star game on ESPN 1550. It's the middle of the summer and it's hard to believe, but hunting season is just weeks away. And to get you fired up, JB Outdoors in St. Joseph is announcing the fall kickoff sale. Stop in Saturday, July 23rd from 9 until 5 for free t-shirts for the first 50 customers. Door prizes, raffles, and take advantage of unbelievable prices on bows, crossbows, archer accessories, and hunting gear. Meet outdoor industry reps and shoot a Parker crossbow in their mobile shooting range. Kickoff event is July 23rd. Sale price is good through the 30th. As a Buchanan County Commissioner, Dan Hausman has worked with many great county employees. He's also helped hundreds of people in the county. He's led the way in helping reduce costs and has held the line on county taxes. Hundreds of thousands of dollars have been saved through better purchasing and working smarter. Economic development has always been a top priority. He's helped create over 2,600 new jobs and brought in over $825 million in new investments in Buchanan County. Experience counts. Vote for Dan Hausman, the Eastern District Commissioner. I'm Dan Hausman. This message is paid for by the Citizens for Dan Hausman, Donnie Miller, Treasurer. I rescued Toast from a shelter in 2011. I love Toast because she's a lazy diva. Toast does whatever she wants, obviously. She's sleeping right now. She's so loving. She's so comforting. When I walked into the shelter, I knew right then that she was special. Toast, Instagram star and shelter pet. Amazing adoption stories start in shelters. Start yours today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. This is St. Joe's Home for Sports. ESPN. ESPN. 1550. The North All-Stars lead the South All-Stars 5-1. I am Dave Rigger back inside Phil Welch Stadium. And a new pitcher on the hill now for the South. And from the Nevada Griffins... Trying to see a number here. It's hard to see there. Excuse me, it's a Clarenda A's. I beg your pardon. It is Derek Adams from the Clarenda A's who is pitching. 101 of the 3 1 5 ERA in 20 innings pitch. He's made four starts, one relief appearance, has one complete game. Has allowed 19 hits in 20 innings, 23 Ks, 12 walks. And those innings just wrapped up his freshman year at Jacksonville State. He is from Decatur, Alabama, and Jacksonville State is in Jackson, Alabama. And a pinch hitter for Kyle Thurman. So new pitcher, no new batter as for the South All-Stars. It's going to be Taryn Beasley, who was in the All-Star game earlier tonight. Swing and a miss here, and it's a no ball and one strike count. Pitch is low. Murphy, the starter, went two innings. Everybody else has just gone one since that point in time. And Taron Beasley is, was not on the original roster, but he was already here for the home run derby, so they added him. A couple of guys either didn't want to come or couldn't come. And now it's a two ball and one strike count to Beasley. Beasley's now in the DH spot for Kyle Thurman. Now he swings and misses at a breaking pitch. It's a two ball and two strike count. So two and two the count to Beasley. 5-1 our score here in the top of the seventh inning. 5 7 and 0 for the North, 1 4 and 0 for the South. The 2 2. Fastball late on that swing and he strikes out. So a strikeout as Beasley goes down. And that will bring up Ethan Valdez, who is the second baseman. Valdez plays for the Nevada Griffins. Wrapped up his freshman year at Nickel State, so he's a teammate. We've Seen four or five Nickel State guys in the make league this year from Louisiana. Plays right, plays batting right-handed. He plays second base right now, but he's from San Antonio, Texas. He made 52 starts as a true freshman this past year. 
Hit 282 with a no homer, seven RBI. Scored 38 runs. He shoots one foul off to the right side. And now it's a one ball and one strike count to Valdez. He's batting for the first time in this game. And Quade Smith, we talked about, he plays at Nickel State. Now a high fastball chased one out of the zone. So that makes it a ball and two strikes as Valdez is behind in the count. Derek Adams working quickly. He's from the stretch all the time. He has made four starts this year. Now time's been called by Valdez. Again, Adams is in there. He's ready to go. As soon as he gets it, he wants to go. Valdez got in for a second and then wasn't quite ready, so he stepped back out. Top of the seventh, 5-1 our score. Here's the pitch. It's right down the first baseline, but fouls. He was late on that fastball. Stays alive. It's a 1-2 count. Valdez has struck out 12 times and walked nine so far this year. Has 11 steals and 18 attempts, so he is a threat to steal. Has an on-base average of 358, despite a 261 average. Good defensive second baseman. 1-2 pitch. Called strike three. Fastball caught him looking outside corner. And back-to-back -back case to start the seventh inning for Derek Adams from the Clarenda Aid. The A gets two Ks. 23 strikeouts in 20 innings, so more than one per inning. And now there'll be a new catcher. And that catcher is Jake McPhail. So he is in there now for Coyos. And I believe that is all of the Mink League South All-Stars now. And I believe all the North All-Star, the position players that is. I think all the position players have now been Swapped out for both North and the South here in the top of the seventh inning. A 1-1 one, one count. Now it's a 1-2 count to McPhail. McPhail again plays for Nevada. Plays at Northwest Mississippi Community College. 344 average this summer. No homers and 6 RBI. He's had a good summer behind the plate. There's a ground ball back up the middle. Mar to his left. Back behind second. Has to quickly throw it. Does as stretched by McWhorter. And gets McPhail. Good play by Brett Marr of the St. Joseph Mustangs. It's short. And it's a 1-2-3 top of the seventh. We're to the bottom half of the seventh inning. It's a 5-1 to one North All-Star lead here in the Mink League All-Star game on ESPN 1550. Denny missed the 2016 Mink League All-Star game. As the Mink League North All-Stars have a 5-1 lead. They scored all five of their runs in the third inning. As four of their seven hits came that inning as well. South All-Stars got one back in the sixth, but it's been very good pitching other than that one inning from Tanner Allen as he struggled. And now a new pitcher for the South All-Stars from the Joplin Outlaws. It is J.C. Hatcher. Hatcher wears uniform number 37. He played this past year at Iowa Central Community College. Six feet, 215 pound right-hander. One on one this summer with a 3.60 ERA. He's made five starts, no relief appearances. He's pitched in 30 innings and allowed 23 hits. He has 27 strikeouts and 12 walks. 
in those 30 innings, but again, 101 with a 3.60 ERA. 1.17 whip so far this year. Some of the guys that just hit, Jake McPhail is behind the plate now. Out in center field is Brandon Pugh. He's yet to hit yet, but he's now in center field from the Joplin Outlaws. And now we see Brett Moore, who's now playing shortstop. He made that very good defensive play to end the top half of this inning. He'll lead off the bottom half. Moore bats right-handed and slices one to right. It will get in front of Judah Zikafus, almost skips away from him. He has to reach out and grab it, but Brett Moore a base hit. Now the Mustangs have four of the eight hits for the Mink League North All-Stars. So it's been a good showing so far for the Mink League North leaders. Lead-off single here in the bottom of the seventh inning. So Brett Mars aboard. They'll bring up Quade Smith. After that, Nick Golly. They've been in the outfield the entire time because two outfielders got hurt this week after the All-Star rosters were announced, and Matt Johnson replaced one of them with Tyler Cox, but they don't have a backup outfielder. So those three are the guys this game. No balls and a strike, a swing and miss by Quade Smith, who is one for three so far in the game. This one's inside for a ball. So J.C. Hatcher, the new pitcher. Smith struck out his last time up for the third out in the fourth inning. Popped up on the infield to second base back in the third when they scored five runs. And singled and stole a base with stranded at third base back in the first inning. As he had a ground ball that got through the right side of the infield back in that opening frame. So after the leadoff single by Marr, it's Smith, and then Golly, and then Wagaman. We'll see if there is a new net is going to be... Cal Urich will be the DH now from the St. Joseph Mustangs. There's a ground ball toward first. The only player now. Johnson's going to try and go to second base, and it hits Marr and gets away. So it hit Marr in the back on the throw from Johnson. And again, I was about to say his only play is at first base. He should have listened. His only play should have been first base, as he should have stepped on the bag to get the easy out. But Johnson hits the back of Marr trying to run to second base to get that force out. You get the lead runner, and that's a mistake by Johnson. Now that's the first error in the game for either club. And the St. Joseph Must or the Mink League North All-Stars now have two on with nobody out for three, four, and five coming up. So an error on Johnson. Now there's two on. Nick Galley is one for three in the game as well. He flew out to the second baseman on a pop-up his last time up to lead off the fifth inning. Singled and scored in that five-run Third inning, there's a fly ball to center field. Marr tags. He'll have to stay put. Very good throw from Pugh in center field. Going back to Golly, he singled and scored in that five-run third, and he was out 5-3 on the ground ball to the third baseman in the first inning. But he flies out to center field here, and now it's Kyle Yurick who will be the DH. So Yurick has had just a sensational last three weeks or so. All five of his home runs this Summer have come the last three weeks. He's now hitting 318, five homers, and 28 RBI. The 28 ribbies lead all Mink League players. He is, when Trent Hill got drafted, and again, he was in that four hole most of the time, boy, Yurick really, really stepped up. He hit the two run home run in the bottom half of the eighth inning on the 4th of July, among all the fog and smoke from, I guess, smoke, I should say, from the fireworks around the area. Two on, one out. Yurick swings. Big swing there. He fouled it back. He's trying to get a home run right here in the All-Star game. But Yurick playing in the DH spot tonight. Normally what he does for the Mustangs, too. And he's got a ligament in his elbow that is kind of limiting him playing in the field. And he's a pitcher, or has been a pitcher in the past. They thought he was going to be a pitcher this summer, but he's got a ligament that's strained, and he's not able to this summer. So he's just in the DH spot or playing first base some. And he's done a great job of that with the numbers I just gave you. Last year, he had 11 homers, 47 RBI for Webster University in St. Louis, as he is from the Lou. 329 average last year for Webster. The Gorlocks of Webster University. Two balls and a strike to Yurick. Here's a pitch low and away, three balls and one strike. And the Mustangs, Lewis mainly put on a pretty good show in, in the All-Star game home run derby, All-Star home run derby. But they could have had a couple other guys. Cox could have been in there. Yurick has the most home runs of any Mustang. He could have been in the thing. But Mealy put on a pretty good show and just got beaten in the semifinals. And there's a five-pitch walk. First walk by any pitcher 
since the third inning for the South and for the North. Uh, they had one in the fifth, and that's it. So we've seen some times watching all the Mustang games where there have been quite a few walks. They've struggled with their command at times, but good pitching tonight. It's a 5-1 game. Now Brady Anderson will swing and foul one away with the bases loaded and one out. So the, the walk to Urich, and he is at first base now with the bases loaded. Smith at second base and Maher at third. Here is Anderson looking at a strike, and now it's 0-2. He got robbed. He got robbed of a base hit. And deep right field his last time up. Zikapus made a catch on the track. Ball in the dirt, good stop by Jake McPhail back behind home plate. Here's Brady Anderson, looks at one outside, two balls and two strikes. Sanderson has two home runs this year. 346 average. He played two years ago for St. Joseph in just eight games. Hit 227 in those eight games. Didn't play last year for the Mustangs, but came back and having a breakthrough season. He's only struck out six times this year. He's got a 2-2 count with the bases loaded. Ground ball towards short, could be two, and now it eats up the shortstop, and he does not have a play anywhere. Second error in the game as Wetrich kind of got a funny hop and hopped up near his waist. He couldn't quite handle it as he was going to try and turn two. And that will be the second error in the inning for the South All-Stars. Now the North takes a 6-1 to one lead here in the seventh inning. So had not had an error until this inning and two from the South All-Stars. So an under and run there. And now a ground ball up the middle is going to get through as McWhorter from Chillicothe will knock in a run. Coming from third base is Yurik, and he will score. The throw goes to third. It's overthrown, but Anderson cannot advance. As backing up the play was J.C. Hatcher, and advancing to second base on that throw to third was McWhorter. So he'll drive in two to make it an 8-1 to one lead for the North All-Stars as they have broken things open here in this seventh inning. McWhorter with a two-RBI single. The first baseman now from Chillicothe gets his first hit in the game. And Anderson to third base. And McWhorter to second. So still two in scoring position. That takes away the double play now, too, with just one out. And Jonathan Ramon at the plate. Seventh batter in the inning. Eight to one, our score. Fastball is going to miss a little bit low for ball one. For the most part, it's been all Mink League North tonight. They've been helped out with a couple of errors here in this inning, but still they've been in command the entire game. There's a chopper foul back behind home plate. One ball, one strike to count. Ramon is 0 for 1 in the game. He flew out to right fielder Judah Zikafus, who had to run in and make a diving catch, diving back toward the infield. He bats with two men in scoring position. Infield stays back here in the All-Star game, and again, it's a seven-run game. If it'd be a closer game, they'd certainly be in. Or if it wasn't an All-Star game, it would probably have to be closer for them, though, to be in. This is a seven-run lead for the North. Two balls and a one-strike to count to the North All-Star third baseman now, Jonathan Ramon from Sedalia. And there's a chopper towards short. It's going to score a run. Wetrich has it, throws to first base to retire Ramon, but an RBI ground out from Ramon makes it a 9-1 game. The North All-Stars clobbering the South All-Stars here in this second annual Mink League All-Star game. The two errors have really hurt this inning, but there's a leadoff single by Brett Marr of the Mustangs to start things. And now, they will have... A new batter coming into the game. It's Alex B. I'm not sure how he's hitting again. It should be Tyler Cox in right field, but B, who was in the game as a catcher, comes in now, so he is re-entering the game somehow. 
And now it's a two ball, make it a three ball and no strike count. A runner at third base and nobody out. So Alex B has re-entered the game. And now a fly ball to shallow center field. Going back is the shortstop Wetrich. He will make the catch and retire the side. And the North All-Stars are retired. But they get four more runs. They now lead 9-1 to one after 7 as we continue with the Mink League All-Star game right here on ESPN 1550. We continue from Philwell Stadium. It's the Mink League All-Star Game as we go to the top of the eighth inning. And the Mink League North has a 9-1 lead on the Mink League South. Nine runs, nine hits, no errors for the North. One run, four hits, and two errors for the Mink League South All-Stars. And now it'll be Brandon Pugh who will lead things off for the Mink League South All-Stars as he is from the Joplin Outlaws. He's playing center field and the new, new pitcher is Caleb Bounce, a local product from Savannah High School who now pitches at William Woods. He's got a 4-0 record for the Chillicothe Mudcats now as he is the new pitcher into the game. So Bounce, pitcher for the Savages. North pitching has now retired six consecutive South All-Star batters the last couple of frames. This one misses low after a check swing foul off the bat of Brandon Pugh. Pugh bats for the first time. One ball, one strike to count. Now Pugh looks at a breaking pitch low for ball two. Caleb Bounds on the season. He's wrapped up his senior year at William Woods. Again from Savannah, went to North Central Missouri College for a couple of seasons. 4-0 this summer with a 3-8-1 ERA. Called strike, makes it a two ball and two strike count. Bounds in 28 and one-third innings has allowed 34 hits. He has struck out 24 and walked eight as a 1-4-8 whip so far this year. 2-2. Two -two. Tried a breaking pitch to give him a chase it. He did not. Now it's a 3-2 count. Brandon Pugh playing center field now. He plays at North Alabama. This summer has been very impressive. 358 average. No homers, nine RBIs. Ground ball toward Ramon at third base. Has to make a long throw. Does and just gets him by a step. Ramon's got a gun and a great play back behind third base on a 5-3 ground out. So that'll be the first down here in the eighth inning as the Mink League North All-Stars again have a 9-1 lead. Tanner Wetrich will hit. He's one for one of the game. He came on as a pinch hitter in the sixth and had an error last inning at shortstop. But had a base hit to lead off the sixth inning. He has scored the only run so far in the game for the South All-Stars. 9-1 to one our score. There's an off-speed pitch, checking his swing and taking a ball inside was Wetrich. Wetrich plays at William Woods University as well. A lot of William Woods guys. Obviously, Sedalia's coach is from there, so they have some players, but Nevada's got one. Chillicothe's got one, and they're facing each other right now here in the All-Star game. 
William Woods was 28 and 24 this past year. Chased a bad pitch, a breaking ball that was a bad pitch where it ended up, but a great pitch for Caleb Bounds to get him to swing and miss. Now 2 2. Misses low, three balls and two strikes. Again, Ramon still at third base. Mar is at short. Gutierrez is at second base. McWhorter is at first base for the North All Stars. 3 2. Ground ball toward Marr. He'll charge it, grab it near the infield grass. Fires a strike to the first base McWhorter, and that'll be the second out in the inning. Both counts have gone 3-2 to the first two batters, but two ground ball outs. And now eight straight South All-Stars have been retired by North All-Star pitching. That'll be Tyler Pagano playing left field tonight from the Nevada Griffins. He is one for three in the game. He singled his last time up up the middle and was stranded at second base. Was out 4-3 on a ground ball to second in the fourth inning and also in the first as well. There's a called strike from Bounds to Pagano. No balls and a strike to the South All-Star left fielder from the Nevada Griffins. The soft speed pitch just misses low. One ball, one strike to bound, from Bounds to Pagano. 1-1. One, one. There's a good off speed pitch called strike number two on the outside corner. So one and two the count with two outs. Nobody on base. Eight straight retired by the North All-Star pitching staff and a ground ball toward Moore. This could be number nine. Nice high hop near his chin. He makes the throw in time, and that will retire the side in order in the top of the eighth inning. We go to the bottom half of the eighth. It's a 9-1 to one lead for the North All-Stars as we continue with the Mink League All-Star game here on ESPN 1550. A natural supporter of wood, tools, the hard work in American way, and of course, the wooden bat club of the Mustangs, because that just makes sense. <laughs> wood, yeah, we got that. As outdoorsmen, the guys at JNV Outdoors know your time is precious, and you'd rather be spending more of it in the woods or on the water. In addition to the retail store at the corner of Pickett and Leonard Road in St. Joseph, they now have a huge line of outdoor gear right at your fingertips. So shop online at www.jnvoutdoors.com. It's packed full of firearms, shooting accessories, hunting gear, archery supplies, optics, apparel, and so much more. Most products can ship directly to your door. Visit the site, jnvoutdoors.com. This is St. Joe's Hall for Sports ESPN, ESPN 1550. We go to the bottom half of inning number eight here at the Mink League All-Star Game from Phil Welch Stadium in St. Joseph, Missouri. It's a 9-1 to lead for the North All-Stars. They have nine runs on nine hits, no errors. One run, four hits, and two errors for the South All-Stars. And it'll be Tyrus Lopez who will now be the pitcher. For the South All-Stars, he is from the Joplin Outlaws. Tyrus Lopez is signed with Arkansas Pine Bluffs. Well, he'll be a teammate of a couple of Mustang players. Jeremiah Figueroa and Antoine Luster, who play for UAPB. He is from Montrose, Colorado. He played at Ellsworth Community College in, in Iowa. So far this summer, he's made five appearances and five starts. He does not have a decision, though, in five starts. The offense hasn't helped him out because his ERA is very good at 1.71 in 26 and one-third innings. He's got only 12 hits. He has 14 Ks and 12 walks, but again, the offense hasn't picked him up because he's thrown well. He should have a few decisions in his five starts. So the right-hander on the man will face Mondesi Gutierrez. He is 0 for 1 so far in the game. There's a pitch outside for ball one. Gutierrez. Looks at a strike there. There's a call strike to make a one ball, one strike count. He's 0 for 1 so far in the game as he was out on a fielder's choice in the sixth inning. 
in his first time up. Now he fouls one off right into the catcher's mitt of McPhail, so it's a no ball and two strike count. Excuse me, a one ball and two strike count to Gutierrez. Mondesi at Orange Coast College in California. Chopper toward short charging is Wetrich, and he throws over in time to make the first down, the inning, one three, or a 6 3 ground out on the ground ball to short. Now the St. Joseph Mustangs, Brett Marr will hit. It's interesting enough that he and Mondesi Gutierrez, Marr has played second base primarily the entire season for the Mustangs, and Gutierrez has primarily played shortstop the entire year for Clarenda, but they have flip-flopped here in the All-Star game. Marr is now playing short, which he plays in his school ball at Rockhurst, and Montesi Gutierrez is playing second base. Pitch in the dirt from Lopez is ball one to Brett Marr. Tyrus Lopez, the right-hander, and likely the last time we'll see a south pitcher in the game. As this is the bottom of the eighth inning. The North All-Stars have a 9-1 to lead. There's a called strike. Marr on the season for the Mustangs is hitting just 266. He's been a little bit of a slump lately. He was well over 300 for really the entire year until about the last week or so. He's really slumped lately. As a base hit in this game, maybe that'll get him going for the Mustangs. He fouls one away. It's one ball and two strike count. But he was the shortstop on the 2016 ABCA Rawlings Gold Glove Team in Division II this past year. Stays alive here, just fouls it back behind home plate. He is from Warrensburg, Missouri. And went to Rockhurst. He hit 335, no homers, and 20 RBI this past year on a Rockhurst team that won 30 games. They won 18 and 10 in the GLBC. Here's the 1 2, another curveball. This one's upstairs. 2 and 2 the count to you. The shortstop now for the North All Stars, Brett Marr. Pretty impressive, though, that he was on the Gold Glove team as the shortstop for all of Division II baseball. Late swing on that one, but protects and stays alive and fouls it away. Now it's a two ball and stays two balls and two strikes. The North All-Stars have nine hits. The South All-Stars have four, two of them from J.C. Santos. There's a liner to center field coming on. Trying to make the catch as Pugh, he does. Good running catch by Brandon Pugh in center field to rob Brett Marv a base hit as he struck that thing pretty well. The line out to center field, and there are two outs here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. That will be Quaid Smith who will hit. This will be his fifth plate appearance. Again, no outfielders as backup, so they had to go with the three guys, although Alex B came on as a – came back into the game to bat for Tyler Cox. Pitch in the dirt is ball number one. Smith is one for four. He reached an error and scored in the four-run seventh inning. He singled and stole the base and was stranded back in the first inning. And the five run 30 popped him up on the infield a second, and then he struck out in the fourth. There's a called strike on a fastball outside corner. Wade Smith playing center field tonight. He's played some left, he's played some center for Sedalia. And there's one up and in. The North All Stars, despite leading 9 to 1, they have only scored in two innings five in the third, four more in the seventh inning. The pitching staff has done their job. And really, besides those two innings, the South pitching staff has been really good. There's a walk. Ooh, it was not. I beg your pardon. He threw the bat over. Now it's a full count. He threw his bat over to the on-deck circle. But it is a called strike, so Quaid Smith has to go retrieve that as Nick Galley went and got it for him. And now it's a three-ball and two-strike count. The pitch is way outside, so maybe he was... Just looking ahead to what was going to happen. He's on base. Again, not many walks tonight from his pitching, these pitching staffs, which, like in an all-star game, you don't expect many walks. That's just the third walk of the game, these two pitching staffs. Not a ton of strikeouts. But we are in the bottom of the eighth inning with two outs. And there goes the runner, Smith. Throw down to second base is not in time. He swipes it. That's his second steal in the game. It was a called strike, but Smith gets in a scoring position as he steals the base. Smith is second for Nick Galley now of the Chillicothe Mudcats and of Missouri Western. One for four in the game with a base hit. Back in the 30, drove in a run and scored a run in that five-run third inning. 
Pitch in the dirt. Good stop that time. Behind the plate by McPhail. Cyrus Lopez trying to get out of the eighth inning. Get to the ninth because it's a 9-1 to lead for the North All-Stars. And so ball cued off the end of the bat to the right side. It's a one ball and two strike count now to the left fielder for the North All-Stars, Nick Golly. Quade Smith is second base. Here's the pitch. Ooh, that one just missed. Nearly a called strike three from Tyrus Lopez to Nick Galley. Nine to one, North All Stars with the lead. Cal Yurick is on deck, and now a ground ball toward short. Back in by Wetrich. Deep in the hole at short, throws over in time. Great play by Wetrich at shortstop, and that'll be a 6 3 ground out, and that will close out the eighth inning. We go to the ninth. It's a nine to one lead. For the Mink League North All Stars, as we continue with the Mink League All Star game right here on ESPN 1550. Hey everyone. This is Life Tips with Geico. Life Tip 1. Use a shower squeegee to remove pet fur from carpet. Squeegee is also very fun to say. Consider it when naming a pet or child. Life Tip 2. Switch to Geico and you could save hundreds on your car insurance. With over 75 years of experience and a 97% customer satisfaction rating, they know what they're doing. Geico, get savings into your life. Visit geico.com today. The redesigned Case IH Maxim Series tractors are now available at Dura Equipment in Savannah. These new tractors feature an improved cooling package and come equipped with fuel-efficient Tier 4 B-Final SCR-only technology. Other enhancements include a redesigned hood and roof, a longer wheelbase for improved turning radius, and eight high-power LED lights. Optional continuously variable transmission technology is available on select models. For more information on Maxim Series tractors, visit Dura Equipment in Savannah. Have you ever dreamed of owning your own golf cart? Whether it's to get around your farm, visit your neighbor, or take to the campground, use it on the job, or for hitting the links. Go to Midwest Central Outdoor now for up to 24 months with no interest with qualifying credit. Dreaming of having a golf cart can become reality with an Easy Go Golf Cart. Midwest Central Outdoor is Northwest Missouri's authorized Easy Go Golf Cart dealership. Midwest Central Outdoor, right off 71 Highway, I-29, exit 53. Progressive presents Mind Flowness with Flow. You find yourself lying on a beach, feeling warm sand sink between your toes. You ask a passing seagull how you achieve this bliss. Saving money, the seagull whispers, by bundling your auto and motorcycle insurance. You thank the seagull. He steals your sandwich. Ascend to a higher plane of insurance. Bundle your policies and save with Progressive. Visit Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Discounts not available in all states. This is St. Joe's Hall for Sports. ESPN. ESPN. 15.30. We go to the ninth inning here at the Mink League All-Star Game as the Mink League North All-Stars have a 9-1 to lead on the South as they try and win for the second consecutive year. They won last year's All-Star Game and trying to win it again in 2016 as this is the second edition of this annual game now. Something that will stick around that looks like as they've done a nice job with this event. And I think they want to keep it a Phil Welch. I'm, I'm guessing they may look around to see if they want to go anywhere else, but the Mustangs do a nice job. There's a decent crowd for this game and it'd be hard to duplicate that anywhere else with the way the Mustangs operate. But we'll see how it all plays out here in the near future. 9-1, to North All-Stars with the lead, and the St. Joseph Mustang will pitch the ninth inning for the North as Jake Pearl comes on. Pearl's first pitch in there for strike number one, a fastball down the middle. J.C. Santos has two of the four base hits. He's at the plate now, batting left-handed against Jake Pearl of the Mustangs. As Pearl so far this year has a one ERA. This one's outside for a ball. Pearl's appeared in... Eight games, he's thrown nine innings, no decisions, a 1.00 ERA. One run in nine innings of work. He has only allowed six hits in nine innings. That's up and in. Nine strikeouts in nine innings, four walks, so a 1-1-1 one, one, one ERA, or whip, I should say. Ball up and in, makes it a two ball and one strike count to J.C. Santos, who is two for three in the game. Santos looks at one low, and now it's three and one. 
Santos was out one three and a comeback of the pitcher back in the sixth inning and then singled in both the second and fourth innings. Here's the 3 1 pitch from Pearl, and it's high. It's a five pitch walk. Santos had a single to right his first time up and then back up the middle in the second, his four, second at bat in the fourth inning, but he walks here, so he's been on base three times. So Pearl, like a lot of the relievers for the Mustangs, or a lot of the pitchers in general for the Mustangs, have had trouble with their command this year. A lot of walks from the pitching staff for the Mustangs. They've kept their hits down, but they're averaging almost five walks per game as a team, so Pearl keeps that going here in the All-Star game. John Milan threw a score to sitting. And now going out to talk. To... Jake Pearl, I believe, is John Zuptic, I believe, is wearing a Sedalia uniform as the catcher. I'm not sure about that, but I think so. Here's the 1 0. And there's a called strike. So maybe having some fun here as John was the catcher for the home run derby. One ball, one strike to count. And now getting jammed is Cole Johnson from Nevada, but he fouls it down the third baseline. So that makes it a one ball and two strike count from Pearl to Johnson. He's 0 for 1 in the game. He was out 5-3 and a ground ball to Jonathan Ramon at third base his last time up. Now playing first base for the South All-Stars. Ground ball towards second. The runner was off, so no chance at a double play. With it is Mondesi Gutierrez. He will throw it to McWhorter at first base to get a 4-3 ground out. But again, the runner was off on that one, so Santos, there's no chance to double him up. So the runner advances to second base. Santos is second now with one out, and that'll bring up Judah Zikafus, who is 0 for 3 in the game. He was at the plate when the home plate umpire collapsed, and we had about a 10-minute delay. And Oh, I forgot to tell you, I found an update on that. Evidently, the ball got him in the chin and just kind of knocked him out for a second. And they haven't taken him to the hospital. I think he's okay. They've looked at him and everything, but that's the update on him. Here's an off-speed pitch that is low and inside. Low and outside, I should say. So I think he's going to be okay, but took the ball. It must have got away from the catcher. I didn't think it did, but it must have got away or been foul tipped. Yeah, they got him just in the chin in the right spot. And kind of just knocked him out for a minute. Two balls and no strikes now from Pearl to Judah Zikafus, who was 0 for 3 in the game. This one's low and in, almost hit him. So now three balls and no strikes. Pearl walked four in nine innings prior to the All-Star break with the Mustangs and having some trouble with his command right now here in the ninth to try and close out this game. North All-Stars lead the South 9-1. Ground ball going to be towards second base. Gutierrez has to hustle, gloves it to first base, and it's not going to be in time. It took him off the bag. See if they charge an error or not. I'm not sure a good throw would have got him. I think it probably would have. Looks like they're going to give him an infield base hit. It's a tough play for Mondesi Gutierrez, who had to hustle to get to it, but Zikafus, a left-hander, runs pretty well, so he's able to beat it out. It did pull McWhorter off the bag just a just a bit. So now there's two on with one out here in the ninth inning. North All Stars up nine to one, and a ground ball towards second. This could be two. Gutierrez to Mar. The relay. Ah, I couldn't get out of his glove. Boy, they had a great chance with Beasley not running that well. That should have been two, but in that transfer from his glove to his hand, just could not get it out. So a run does score makes it a nine to two game. Is the second out in the inning? It is a fielder's choice, and a run does come in a score. So Beasley's at first base, and that will bring to the plate Ethan Valdez for his second A.B. He struck out looking his first time up in the seventh inning. He bats right-handed. There's a pitch low. Valdez, 261 average, no homers, 11 RBI. 9-2 to two, the North All-Stars with the lead. Looks like they're going to win the first two. Mink League All-Star Games in Mink League history. There's a good breaking pitch in there for strike one. And last year was the inaugural game. This year, number two, but the North with a win last year, and looks like they're going to 
Get a win here in the second edition of this event. Pitch in the dirt, now 2-1. and one. Pearl, the second Mustang pitcher in the game, as John Milan threw a scoreless fourth inning. Gave up a base hit, but nothing else. Here's the 2-1. Another good breaking pitch in there for strike number two. So two outs, runner at first base, 9-2 lead for the North All-Stars, and now they're one strike away from a victory. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Another breaking ball stays inside. So now it's full. Three balls and two strikes to Ethan Valdez. Now playing second base. Valdez, a 261 hitter. Again, he plays at Nichols State for the Nevada Griffins. 3-2. Lined off to the right side out of play. So that keeps him at the dish. Nine runs, nine hits, and no errors for the Mink League North All-Stars. The South, two runs, five hits, and two errors. There goes Beasley, pitches low. Second walk in the inning, the one strike away from getting the game over with, and now there'll be two on as Jake McPhail, the catcher now, for the South All-Stars will dig in, and he is from the Nevada Griffins. Nevada had the most players of anybody. They had 12. Two got added late, but still they had 10 before that, which was the most. And now I've just been informed they're going to go a full nine so that everybody can play. So they will play the bottom half of the ninth inning. Here's the 1-0. It is low. Jake Pearl having some issues here in this inning. He's allowed to run. He walked the leadoff man, gave up a base hit. Builder's Choice could have ended the game on a double play after that single, but then he walked another batter. Now it's a 2-0 count to Jake McPhail, the catcher who was 0-1 for, for the South. Now it's three balls and no strikes. And again, Pearl has walked four and in nine innings this year of work, so it's not like he's walked a ton of guys this year, but having some trouble here in the ninth inning. There's a pitch low, and that's the third walk of the inning for Jake Pearl. So now the base is loaded. And that will bring to the plate Brandon Pugh. And this is, he's really the only pitcher in this game that's struggled with his command. We saw Tanner Allen struggle giving up the five runs in the third inning. But it was mainly because of hits. Now he did walk two batters in the inning, but he wasn't going four pitch walks or anything like that. He had a lot of three two counts and he also gave up four hits in the inning. Now Pearl overthrows this one. It's low. Bases loaded for the South All-Stars as they're trying to get to the bottom of the ninth inning. There's a called strike. The Mustangs are back in action tomorrow here at Phil Wells. They'll take on the Chillicothe Mudcats. Our next broadcast will be on Saturday when they play Nevada back here at home. There's a pitch low. Two balls and a strike from Pearl to Brandon Pugh, who is 0 for 1. Last time up for Pugh, he was out 5, throwing a ground ball to Ramon. Called strike. Now it's two balls and two strikes, so the base is loaded. Two outs, a 9-2 game. From the windup is Pearl now with the bases loaded. Here's a foul off to the right side. And Pugh plays for the Joplin Outlaws. He was a senior this past year at North Alabama, but didn't play a ton. He's had a good summer, though, 358 average with no homers and 9 RBI. He only played in 14 games for North Alabama as this breaking ball doesn't break, and it's over the head of Pugh. You just hit 190 in those 14 games and four starts for North Alabama. Three and two in danger of walking in a run. So Pearl's on 31 pitches here in the inning, and now a chopper toward third. Ramon has it. He'll fire one to first base in time to retire the side, and Pearl's inning is complete. And he had a rough one, but he just gives up the one run. We go to the bottom half of the ninth inning. It's a 9-2 lead for the North. They're going to win it. But, again, everybody wants to play, so they will play the bottom half of the ninth inning. We're going to break, come back with that bottom half of the ninth as we continue with the Mink League All-Star Game here on ESPN.
Getty. My name is Dave Riggert. The Mink League All-Star Game is going to go to the Mink League North All-Stars as they are going to win this game at least 9-2, but they will bat here in the bottom half of the ninth inning so everybody can play in the game. Last pitcher to see action tonight will be from the Nevada Griffins, Tyler Butcher. As he is from New York, Pennsylvania, 2-2 two two record this year, nine relief appearances. He has three saves and a 1.88 earned run average. So they will play the bottom half of this inning just to let everybody play in the game. So it'll be four, five, and six. As Cal Yurick is the DH. He's had one plate appearance and he walked his last time up. And he came in a score run in that four-run seventh inning that made it a nine-to-one game at the time. First pitch strike from Butcher. One ball, one strike to count. There's an off-speed pitch, good pitch by Butcher. As he's now ahead in the count, one ball, two strikes. A lot of people got up and left. They thought it was over, and I think everybody did. No one know, knew that they were going to play nine. And even Jake Pearl on the mound <laughs> was trying to, like he was waiting to get handshakes and everything like that, and nothing came. So, again, they are playing the bottom half of this. Ninth inning, 9-2 our score. The Mink League North going to win for the second consecutive year. You're getting a 318 average, five homers, and 28 RBI. He looks at a pitch outside for ball two. Butcher was a redshirt freshman this past year at Shippensburg University in Pennsylvania. As a redshirt freshman, he appeared in 15 games, all in relief. There's a bouncing ball towards second base. Up with it, and over to first base in time is Ethan Valdez, and that'll be a 4-3 ground out for the first out here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. So one up, one down here in the ninth, and that'll bring up Robert Cummins is going to re-enter the game, and he is going to be the, he was the catcher last inning then. It wasn't, they didn't try and sneak. <laughs> John Zupta again is Cummings, now a ground ball towards short, nice high hop for Wetrich, and he'll throw out Cummins, who had a two RBI single earlier in the game, but he's back out there, and they have re-entered some players. And Cummins, who was one for two, is now one for three on that ground ball out to short. So there's two outs now here in the bottom half of the ninth, of the ninth inning. And Ross McWhorter will hit now. Nine-two North All-Stars with the lead. Here's the pitch by Butcher. It's a fastball that just missed outside. A one ball count now to McWhorter, who singled his last time up. And he drove in two runs with a base hit back up the middle. One for two in the game. Pops one into foul territory. Santos gives chase. He lost it for a second. Now he finds it. Back pedals, and he will make the catch. And that will retire the side here in the ninth inning. And that will do it. The Mink League All-Star game is complete, and the North All-Stars defeat the South by a final score of 9-2 as they win the first two ever Mink League All-Star Games. The North again wins it 9-2. to two. Thanks for listening, everybody, here on ESPN 1550. I am Dave Rigger. So long from Phil Welch Stadium.